In this video, you will see me start from basically just a noxious staff, probably around a three, 400 mil bank and go all the way up to, well, the billions of GP that you'll see. And RuneScape money making is one of the main reasons we play the game, not only to have fun, but to try to build up our bank. In this video, you'll see the first full year of my Road to Party Hat. I went and condensed these videos. I know it's a long video, so you're like, how did you condense them? Well, I did remove almost two hours of clips of just stuff that I didn't feel like was that exciting and needed to be in there, or me just rambling a lot. So I removed all that, and then I also went and I redid the audio for over 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes of this video from the first five or six episodes because the audio was just so bad back then when I started YouTube. YouTube, uh, edited this all down. Took me quite a while, but I hope this is one that you guys will enjoy. As always, if you want to see what happens next after this entire video, you can keep up with the series by subscribing to my channel. And yeah, hope this gives you some motivation. You can play while watching this and hope it's an all around good video. So enjoy. So a good place I decided to start was Corp. Now I already had the Mizuari, which isn't too expensive. So we already had an okay gear to do Corp with and Corp is pretty AFK. Um, you can use Revolution. You can basically go and just AFK pretty well. And I used an old that coil and I ended up getting a decent amount of like onyx bolts and stuff. Corp is just, well, at the time, very good, like consistent money. So if I need to make a little bit of starting cash, um, or if you need to make a little bit of starting cash, Corp is always a great place. Now I wasn't, you know, doing this super optimally. I'm sure everything could have been better, but it was pretty chill and getting a sigil is like a huge thing. Even though they're not worth that much anymore, it just brings me back to the old days. Um, right now, this is my tab from Corp. It's where I decided to stop. I had quite a bit of stuff. I did actually sell off some of the Onyx Bolts, so you're not seeing the Onyx Bolts here, uh, but we did get a good amount of loot in terms of like arrows and dragon hide cannonballs we did get a holy elixir which is a little bit it kind of isn't as much as you would think uh, but it is still something and in total the loot we got from corp was around 20 25 mil or so 25 mil and it would have been more of course because the onyx bolts that i sold off previously so i'd say we maybe made around 35 30 to 35 mil so not bad to start us off i then decided to go to elite dungeon 3 and elite dungeon 2 so i'm very bad at this point at ambassador and i really just haven't gotten the hang of it so i died quite a bit trying this um Eventually though, I did manage uh, to get the kill at least once, and this is the loot here. Nothing too crazy, only a few mil, but uh, you know, finally getting the kills was at least nice, and maybe eventually it will get like the Eldritch Crossbow. But as you can see, my kills are extremely long, and I mean, that is just by design because I'm just not good at it. So I take it very slow, use a lot of defensives, and my main priority is not getting fast kills. It was just basically trying to get a kill um, because to me, Ambassador has been and always will be a very tough boss. I don't know why. He's just one of the toughest ones for me, but nice to get a kill here. And then we're actually gonna move on. I did get the achievement here for killing the ambassador in solo. And then we're gonna move on to Elite Dungeon 2, which is one of my favorite Elite Dungeons. But I did actually get a huge drop here, a Greater Fury Ability Codex uh, from the second boss. So this is huge, our first big drop of this series. And I was surprised how much it went for. It actually goes for 150 mil at this time. So that's a huge, huge boost to the bank here. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. Now, what I decided to do here was kind of a risk, but I wanted to do it. I decided to spend them all the money I've made so far and buy Elite Tectonic. And now we have Elite Tectonic. We've got the Nox Staff, and I decided I was going to do some Magister. This is one of my favorite bosses. I have a ton of kills here, have the pet, have the log, but it always seems to make me a good amount of money. The Vital Sparks. Um, you, of course, are looking for the phylacteries to make the Kopesh as well. Uh, you can get the gloves, which aren't too much, but I was using Vital Spark Drop Enhancers, so I was getting a ton, an absolute ton of Vital Sparks, which is one of the main reasons you go here. I mean, it just, this boss just 
spews out vital sparks like nothing. We did also get a Gloves of Passage, which is kind of rare, but here I saved up 25 phylacteries, and we're going to open these up. I believe I do have some scraps of scripture in the bank, so we're going to see if we can get enough here to get myself the full Kopesh. And basically after doing all that, we have enough to make the full Kopesh. We got like 245 and I had some in my bank. So now we can make the Kopesh of Tumakin here, which it's always feels satisfying to make these once you do that big grind of the Magister. And then you finally get to make this and see all your profit. It's just a really nice feeling. Now in terms of loot, we had quite a bit in the tap here, 540 Vital Sparks, Gloves of Passage. Uh, we got a bunch of normal drops here sold it all off and we're gonna make a big big chunk here now keep in mind i did spend around 200 mil on keys if you add in supplies maybe another like 30 mil or so the kopesh sold for over 400 mil and we're looking at 531 mil here so almost a 300 mil profit from doing the magister which is huge for this series and got us some huge upgrades now here are the upgrades. I decided to go a little bit crazy here. You guys might think I'm just nuts, but I did disassemble my augmented Noxious Staff, which is my main weapon. So I'm gonna have to buy a new one or use the Inquisitor here. Uh, but I did disassemble it to get the Noxious components so we can try to get Biting. So I wanted to get Biting because it's just such a good perk and for the future for more armor sets, I think it will be really good, especially my new Elite Tectonic. So the first attempt, I actually got Biting for mobile which is what I was going for the whole time. So not only do I have Biting 4, but I have Mobile, so in reduce the cooldown of Surge, Escape, Bladed Dive. So that's one of the top combos you want to go for, at least at this time uh, when you know, getting biting. And then I did have noxious components left. So I re-rolled again and I got biting three, which is a huge bummer. And I had enough after this to get a guaranteed biting four. Um, so now I have the biting four mobile and then biting four again for, you know, if I get a ranged or melee setup eventually. So not bad. We did make around 700 mil or so. So honestly, not too bad. I decided to go and do a little bit of hellware since I still need the pet and I ended up getting a crest which is like 25 mil. I wasn't even here for that long so getting a crest is really nice using all my new perked out gear and stuff. So felt good, was getting pretty speedy kills. After this I decided to do some ED2. now. I really like ED2 personally. It's one of my probably favorite bosses. Um, it's, you know, Siryu doing ED1 is nice, uh, but ED1 kind of doesn't have that chance at a rare drop, which is sometimes a good thing, more consistent money, but I like having that, you know, big chance at those rare drops. So that's personally why I really like ED2. I also like ED3 for the same reason. And since I had a lot of struggles, um, basically soloing as you saw before, I decided to go with my friend for some duos and they were a lot smoother basically because I could focus on DPSing and didn't have to focus on almost dying every second. Uh, so we did get some really speedy runs of ED3. Sadly, we did not get any loot, but you know, you can't really expect to get uh, big drops from Ambassador too often because it's just, it's just kind of a a rare thing, especially if you're in duo or trio. Um, at this point, they hadn't updated the rates at all, so it was still uh, much harder to get drops if you're not soloing. But you know, I was. It was nice to you know at least have a little bit of practice. Although I'm not soloing and it's different, uh, I'm still at least getting to do the boss. So we definitely, we definitely at least have that. I did make a decent amount from doing these elite dungeons, as you can see, the 29 draconic energy uh, from ED2, and then the rest from ED3. So about 25 mil not too not too bad and then i decided to go for a boss that i think i had only killed once um solok now at this point solok hadn't been released for too long so i didn't have hardly any experience as you can see i'm using a yak here and we're with my friend i think we were trioing um i think there's three people here it might this might have actually been a duo i can't actually tell right now uh, on the screen it looks like a duo and my friend of course was carrying um Oh, it actually was a trio. Okay, yeah, I thought so. Uh, so a trio, but I did get a solo kill, which is just, it's just so nice when you kill a boss that you've barely ever done that you struggle with. And if you peep the yak, I did have a little bit of food left. So maybe one day I'll be able to use a ripper um, in terms of loot. Eh, I mean, we got the grimoire pages, which is nice, but really 
nothing but you can't really expect much because it's just one kill um, but happy to at least get something i also decided to learn a boss that i haven't done in a long time either which is virago uh, now i think we were doing a four man this was with our clan uh, but it was nice to learn in kind of a dps role rather than you know being bomb tank or base tank so it was, it was much easier to do that as you can see i have a ton of food in my yak at this point i tended to use a yak a lot because i just was very scared to use like uh uh, familiar without having that food without having that crutch um but i did have a lot of food here so i think i could pretty easily switch to like a nihil uh, seeing as i have so much you know so much food left uh, but Virago has always been a pretty fun boss for me i like that you get that tectonic energy uh, almost all the time uh, we get a drop here finally a stack uh, we were splitting basically everything so all the energies at the end everything so here's the first split of the energy um so not too bad a little bit of cash there on top two so a decent amount and then here we get a seismic singularity our team hp got a singularity so we were trioing at this point so uh pretty nice split coming up from this uh, i do not have anything on my log at this point but uh you know Virago is kind of a long-term boss you're gonna have to grind a lot for the pet anyway so i wasn't really too salty about missing that drop seeing as i haven't really done that much but all about making the money here and learning new things so the split from this was actually around 50 mil which at the time is pretty decent 50 mil for you know seismic singularity uh so really happy with that and then decided to keep on the streak of bosses that i really hadn't tried that much i was learning a lot this this time um basically we we're doing solak we we're doing virago and now we're doing rise of the six which uh, I think we were doing with two people on each side, so four man rise of the six. Our kills weren't the fastest. We weren't using any like chinning methods or anything. Uh, we were just straight up killing them. I think we improved our speeds as we went on, which helped a little bit. And you know, it's nice to get that malevolent energy and a chance at a kite shield. Um, the worst part, in my opinion, is escaping at the end because you basically have to surge blade to dive all around. Uh, but we did make a decent amount from doing a little bit of rots. 13.3 mill and then i decided to do something that i barely ever do which is a raid um the reason i wanted to do this was a chance at the pet but also the little codexes um acto as well is decent as a tank gear um it was used a lot at this point at telos so getting acto could be kind of nice here uh, but of course we have you know chance for some some nice loot i don't have much Casey at all. This might have been like one of my first two or three Yaki kills ever. Oh, it looks like I died there as well. Forgot about that. Yep, just dead on in the head. Uh, but I still get to loot, I believe. And yeah, we got a little bit of cash there. And then our second loot here, 2.5 mil. So while not anything crazy, uh, we're still adding a little bit to the bank. All right, so to start off, I was doing some duo next with my friend. We we're seeing just how many kills we could get. Um, so I did end up buying Serenic and Ascensions with some of the money we made in the past. So I kind of had a makeshift range set up here. And it was fun to try it out at next because uh, next is probably one of my favorite bosses it's very nostalgic for me as i used to do it right when eoc came out uh, my friend actually had an ecb so he was really getting us some some pretty fast kills here at least at the time and here we get a torva play body which is the best drop you can get from next an absolute huge drop so that was amazing um as you can see here, we're both pretty excited about this. So that's like a nice, uh, I don't know, maybe around 50 mil split or so. Uh, let's check here how much we actually got. I kind of forget now. Um, looks like the split from that hour, nice over 40 mil. So 42 mil split, not too bad there. Really add in the cash up, so I'll take that. Um, I actually did try to do some solos. Uh, which I hadn't done much. I usually would just go with a friend and I'm kind of learning a bit how to range here. Um, so the solos, they weren't the smoothest, but all that matters is I actually get the kill. And here we actually get a drop here. So you can see we get a Virtus Mask. So while it's not the greatest drop, it's still a drop. It's still something new on the log and it's still some money for the time I'm putting in here. 
And then here we actually get Virtus robe legs, which um, the clip is a little bit laggy here. I'm sorry about that, but we did get Virtus robe legs. Uh, that was solo. So another big drop. So we're just adding to the bank. With my new range setup, I decided to go to Araxor uh, because I still need to complete the Araxor log. Um, so went to Araxor and we're hoping to get some leg pieces. Uh, we did get two onyxes, which at the time is a very, very good drop there. Almost five mil for the two onyxes and the bruise. Um, Araxor is also a boss that is kind of one of my first intros to like higher level PVM. I remember doing it in like 2015, 2016. I remember my friend doing it when it came out. So Araxor will also have always have a you know place in my heart as a boss that I'm always gonna want to do a bit. So grinding to try to get that log is is something I'm definitely definitely gonna do. Usually I'm pretty lucky here. Um, you know, just gonna try to do a few of these every episode and maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get something. Maybe we'll make some money. Another boss, kind of nostalgic as well. You got Nex and you also got Calfite, Calfite Queen. Uh, Calphite King, sorry. This is a boss that I do with my friends all the time. I used to do it back when EOC was released. It was pretty difficult back then. Uh, definitely not as difficult now as you can figure out a way. There's actually ways you can solo it. Um, but we, we are doing some duos here. My friend really wants to get the log. And if you didn't know, you can actually get a drop to make one of the uh, tier 90 defenders from, from Calphite King. So you get the first one from Barrows. You get the second one from Nex. And and then you get the third one uh, from Calphite King. So my friend also wanted to get that. So that's another reason we decided to go. And our kills were actually pretty fast here. They weren't bad at all. And my friend actually ended up getting a Drygore Rapier, which uh, I don't think he needed that. But nonetheless, it's still a drop and it's still going to be kind of a decent split here. So happy with that. And then once again, my friend showcasing how lucky he is at Calphite King. He just has insane luck here. Uh, we end up actually getting a Drygor Mace, which again uh, is a pretty decent drop as well. So I'm honestly happy with that because if you go to Calphite King, all it drops is Drygors, all the normal loot sucks. So you basically just need those Drygors to make any money. So I really can't complain with getting two drops there. And it was a pretty decent split, as you can see there. So we're making good money from next Calphite King and we're just building up that bank and it's pretty exciting. So of course I've done some Dragonkin Laboratory and Blackstone Dragon here on the channel before but I really decided to do a lot more of it just because I really want all the Elite Dungeon pets. I really like them all. It is definitely a big goal of mine to get every single pet from Elite Dungeons. Um, especially, you know, the Blackstone Dragon I think is the coolest looking out of all of them. I didn't really used to like this boss too much but it is definitely the easiest boss out of all the dungeons and if you're looking to get into elite dungeons then I would recommend doing the Dragonkin Laboratory because it is nothing compared to something like Ambassador. It's a pretty chill boss and you'll pretty much have no trouble learning it. You might have a few deaths here and there from random things like the lightning and it does have a few annoying parts where it you know flies up into the air and you just have to sit there and wait for it to come down for a whole minute which I really don't know why they put that in there but yeah, the Blackstone Dragon was also definitely kind to us, as in a minute I will show you another kill that we got. And uh, I have a live reaction in there of what we get, and uh, it's pretty bad because my mic is away from my, my computer, but I do end up bringing the mic back in and talking about it. So I'll just show you a little bit of the kill, and uh, then you can see my reaction. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god. No way. Oh my god, I have to get back up here. My greater par barge ability codex was doubled? Are you kidding me? 
Oh my god. Oh my god, I cannot believe that. That is the biggest drop we've gotten on this series so far. My live reaction, my mic is usually on the other side of like my desk because I only use it to record. I use a different microphone to talk on Discord and stuff. But oh my god, I can't I I Oh my god, that is insane. That is so insane. I think that sells for like 300 mil for one. Well, uh, I guess we'll just say my ED2 luck is insane. Holy crap. This video was going to be about Telos, but I mean, ED2 has just taken the video by storm. Wow. All right, well. So the codexes ended up being a little bit less than I thought, but I still ended up selling them here for 207 mil and 210 mil. So we made over 400 mil in one drop, which is absolutely amazing. And I'm definitely going to put this money to some good use. Next, we ended up doing some Nax Angel of Death, which I have never done here on the channel. I only have, I think I had about 5 or 10 KC. I had very rarely done it, but the clan was hosting an event, and uh, a lot of us were learners and had really never done it before. Uh, my friend HP was tanking, so he has a decent amount of experience, and some other people had a little bit of experience, but a lot of us were learners and we were just trying to figure it out. So there were some deaths, but all in all, it was went pretty good. Next Angel of Death is a very interesting boss. At first, I wasn't sure how to feel about it, but I actually end up liking it a lot. I think we eventually decided to do a seven man and I got my PB to five minutes, which is not great at all, but we're still learning. So I would say that's pretty decent for, you know, only having around 20 KC under my belt, but yeah, here I'm just examining some people, seeing what kind of gear they're using, seeing if I have bad gear or if if uh, if my gear is fine, which I guess I have tier 92 uh, armor, so should be good. But I just wanted to show you guys this kill in case you've never done Next Angel of Death or are intimidated by it, because it's honestly not that hard and you can easily get a mass going of like 9 or 10 people and do it fairly easy. Um, beware though, you can definitely PK people if you don't know what you're doing, so you should for sure watch a guide um, just so you don't kill anybody. Um, I would say this boss is easy to learn, but definitely very hard to master as most people have their rotations pretty set and can do 3 minute kills or so, which is definitely not what we are doing here, but it still was a lot of fun. and. Uh, I definitely recommend giving it a try if you can find a team. Maybe if you join the Discord that I have down below, which is actually a shared Discord between me and my friend Andrew, or some of you may know him as Bibzuda7. Um, I'm hoping to eventually start doing events. Um, also, if you want to get in some events, we're in a clan called the Citadel Kingdom. And uh, I think every Saturday we host an event where in the Discord you'll vote on what boss you want to do and the winning tally is what boss we will do. We've done Next Angel of Death, we've done Virago, we've even done Solok. All of us are learners with, uh, most of us are learners I should say. There are a few, a few people that are medium level, there's some elite level PVMers, but the clan is a very chill clan and you're not expected to be an insane PVMer to come. All we ask is that you try your best. But if you would like to join our clan at all, you can uh, let me know by PMing me in game or on Discord and I'll get somebody with rank to invite you. But I really like doing these clan events because it lets me do a boss without feeling a lot of pressure in a huge team because Nobody really expects us to get insanely fast kills since, again, this is more for people to learn the mechanics and learn new things. So we didn't get too many kills and there wasn't a lot of notable loot, but I should say you do have a chance of getting appraisal codex, which 
is about 700 mil. So even if you're doing a 10 man team, that's still a 70 mil split, which is pretty awesome for the amount of kills you can get per hour. And then you can also get, you know, Wand of the Praesel, um, Imperium Core Orb, which also go for a decent amount. And of course, there's the Intricate Chests, which are a very rare drop. Um, and then the Pet, which I think is one of the coolest looking pets in the game. I really like how the Blood Reaver looks. But here we are at the end of the kill, and at this point you just DPS down next. It's uh, nothing really hard unless you're the tank, I guess. But uh, it's pretty easy. You just DPS the boss down and put on your Luck of the Dwarves and then get your loot. And I ended up getting 1.3 mil there, so it wasn't too bad, but we did do about 10 or so kills. And to finish things off, I'm going to give you guys a little tease into where the next episode's going to go. And that is with some Telos. So if you've never done Telos before, he may seem a little bit intimidating, but he's actually not that hard of a boss once you learn what you're doing. Um, he's very mechanically sound, so you, there are going to be a lot of mechanics that you have to follow. You're going to have to follow rotations, you're going to have to have your own rotations for damage. You're going to need to, you know, memorize, you know, when certain attacks are coming, how many hits until, you know, certain attacks come. He's not super hard but he definitely has a steep learning curve as you can do him from zero percent to four thousand percent enrage and he is the only boss with a streaking and enrage mechanic so his enrage increases kind of like a raxor where you start at zero percent and he can go all the way up to four thousand percent and he will unlock different abilities get more health hit harder the higher in rage you are but then there also is a streaking mechanic which means you can basically kill him claim your loot and then instead of taking the loot you can streak it so you'll continue your streak his enrage will go up a bit and your loot will stay in the chest now the catch is if you die you will lose all your loot unless you have a i believe it's a 25 streak then you will keep i believe 75 percent of your loot but if you have a unique in the chest, such as an orb, you will lose that unless you have more than one. I usually never streak uniques like orbs and stuff just because I'm not that good at Telos where I you know, feel like I can do that. Um, but I do streak until I get a unique or until I die. Usually I streak until I die. I would say if you're getting into Telos, you just wanna go in, watch a few guides and just start at 0% and just keep streaking until you die, um, unless you get a drop, of course. But at that lone rage, you probably are not gonna get a drop, but the regular loot isn't really too much, especially if you don't streak. So I would definitely suggest streaking. Um, P5 is usually the phase, once you hit 100% in rage, you'll unlock phase five, and you'll have to do it to kill Telos. And usually that's a phase that everyone has trouble with, but you know, at 100% in rage, it's really not hard at all. But Telos is a pretty fun boss and we're hoping to get some good loot from him in this video. So we're starting off our Telos streak here and usually I start from 0% just because, you know, you can really build up your streak and the 0% to 100 kills are really, really easy. So I usually start from zero and just streak until I die or until I get a drop. That's usually how I do it. Um, starting from zero is just a nice way to build up your drops because, you know, you get more and more loot the higher streak you're on and zero to a hundred is basically an easy like eight to 12 kill streak. Um, it, you can knock that out in about an hour and uh, it'll get you started on your streak and into gold tier. So that's really why I do it. Usually below 100% you're not going to get too many drops. I know my friend Andrew has done like 3k Telos kills and he's gotten one orb maybe, maybe two orbs under 100%, which is really lucky. 
Um, I know somebody that's done 5k kills and I don't think they've had a single orb under 100%. So once you get over 100% is where you really can start getting drops. There's actually a Telos wiki calculator that will tell you your exact drop rate, um, whether you're on a kill streak or not. So I believe if you're on like a 25 kill streak at 250% in rage, you probably have about the same drop rate about than someone who is just killing it at 500% in rage with no streak. So I would definitely recommend learning how to streak. It's really, really easy and just going from zero to 250% um, is gonna really make those higher tier kills give you a lot better chance at a drop. So like if I streaked from zero to 250, 260%, is gonna probably be on like a 25 streak. If I get to 400%, I'm probably gonna be on like a 40 kill streak, which is going to make me a lot more money than if I just did the one-off kills. So streaking is my personal favorite way to do it. It's kind of boring at the start just because it's pretty easy for me at this point. But once I get to like 200-ish, then it starts to, you know, not feel as bad. And then usually, the I think I actually do my highest Telos kill streak right here. Um, in this episode, so you guys will be seeing that. We're at 301%, 27 kill streaks so far, so not too bad. And we're hoping to get a drop. You know, any kill could be a drop. I have only gotten three orbs in over 800 Telos kills, but now I'm finally starting to streak. Here we jump up to 448%, and here we are on um, 469%. And uh, as you can see, by the food situation. It's really not looking good here. We have basically no food. Telus is still at 65K. And here I am about to barricade because I have no food, nothing. And for some reason it just doesn't go off and we lose our kill streak, which is pretty sad. But yeah, that was my highest kill streak, zero to 400, like 69. And I think it was a 44 streak, 43 streak, I forget, but you know, for me, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm hoping to get zero to 500 soon. But here we're gonna look at the loot. As you can see, since we streak so high, we didn't lose too much. We still got 48 mil, which is really good. Uh, no drops though, but hopefully our luck will change on that. So after this streak, usually after a streak, um, well here I did a streak and I died early. <laughs> um, not much to say about that, but usually after I do a streak, I like to kind of push in rage just because it's a nice change in pace. And you know, it's nice to get your enrage up. So I decided to push my Telos enrage and we actually ended up getting a few kills. But if you look here, when we claim the reward, it actually, you don't get that much loot, 530K. If you if you were streaking up to 613%, you could get four to five mil a kill just in normal loot. So always streak. But uh, yeah, we're still pushing here, 618%. And pushing is, is pretty hard for me because I'm just like, I'm so used to streaking. Oh, but look at this. Here we get a dormant staff of Sliske, which is my first dormant ever, but it's only 20 mil. I remember when these babies used to be 800 mil. Staff Sliske was max cash, orb set was like a bill, and the dormant Staff of Sliske was 800 mil. Now, they're pretty much worthless. I mean, I think it's about 20 mil-ish is what it sells for, but I mean, I guess I'll take that because it's something for the log, but you know, still not not what we wanted i would have rather had anything else this is the worst drop you can get from telos but you know i really do want the dormant title so at least i got one dormant out the way and uh, i can continue and i just need the bow the god the zgs and then the codex and then i will have the full collection log so let's see if we can knock out any more drops so I went and started another streak. We're at 16 kill streak, 175%. I didn't want to, you know, go too hard, but as you can see here, we're still continuing the streak and we get a Saren Godbo, dormant Saren Godbo at 252% in rage, 22 kill streak, which is pretty lucky. My second dormant, not too long after the Staphysliske. And the funniest thing is, 
The craziest thing is my friend Andrew, some of you may know him as Bibs07, we were on Discord and I hardly ever screen share my Telus, but I said, I'm just gonna screen share him Telus so he can watch it. And he said, right before, right before this drop, he said, you're gonna get a dormant Saren God bow. And I did, and we literally couldn't believe it. I wish I was recording my desktop audio because it was the funniest thing ever, but yep, we got a dormant Saren God bow. So all in all, we got two drops from Telos. Uh, two dormants and we made a bit of money off the streaks no orbs but we did do a lot of telos this episode um, i'm definitely going to continue doing telos in future episodes just because it's such good money and i'm really hoping to get lucky on the orb drops because an orb set's like 700 mil but it was pretty fun so now we're going to move on to duo virago which i also did with my friend andrew so I end up doing some Duo Virago with my friend Andrew, and I've never done Duo Virago before. It's, you know, a pretty tough PVM challenge, I would say, at least for me. Um, it's definitely up there. It's definitely not on the, you know, like 4K Telos, um, you know, type of challenge, but it is, you know, it's pretty challenging. I was basing here, which is the easier role, but I had never even based uh, normal Virago with like a five-man team. I have never based before, so 2-0 Virago was my first experience basing, so I was definitely learning on the fly, but Andrew was helping me a lot with, you know, telling me what to do. Um, I definitely get a lot better at keeping up my DPS once I actually know what I'm doing and, you know, how to base tank, you know, what rotations to do and stuff like that. I am using a Yak just because, you know, since I was learning, I don't trust myself to use an eye hill, which in the end, it didn't really end up mattering too much, but um, do make quite a few mistakes to start. Um, I think we did a whole hour of Virago and we didn't, I think we got maybe one kill, which I'll show you, but yeah, died here, didn't clear my bleeds for some reason. Don't know what I was doing, but um, we end up making it to P5 quite a bit. And uh, this is one of our uh, one of our first attempts at P5, which, you know, P5 is basically the phase on Virago that, you know, you need to push out as much damage as possible. And it's even harder when you only have two people, of course. Um, Virago's not really meant to be duoed. Um, so with two people, you really have to, you know, be on point with your rotations. You have to know how to, you know, tank the bombs, stay in the right position, swap out every cycle. So, you know, one person will tank bombs, then one person will go into DPS and you'll just switch off um, more and more. And then eventually you'll push Virago enough if you can keep up your DPS and uh, then you'll, you know, maul and you'll get the kill. So... Um, here, as you can see, we're taking some bleeds here. I do get quite a bit better at taking the bleeds in a, in a fast way. I wasn't very good at the start. I would, you know, let them hit me a few ticks, which isn't ideal. But, you know, a sunshine here. And, you know, as you can see, Andrew's barricading up there. And there we go. We get the kill. 15 minutes, 40 seconds, which is not that great. We do end up getting a 13 minute kill which is our best time but it was really awesome just to um you know get that duo virago kill it felt so good it honestly did not take us as many attempts as i thought i thought it was going to take us hours but we ended up getting i think two kills in one hour and then we actually went back again and we ended up getting four kills in one hour um which is the best you can do i mean um well pretty much the best you can do because most kills are going to take you, you know, 13 minutes. Maybe you can get 12, 11 if you're, if you're really fast. Um, but I know the record is like nine and a half minutes. We were doing this on Scopulus week, um, which is the easiest week to do it. Or it's, that's what Andrew told me. Um, so P3 was pretty easy. You know, it just, you know, you got a Devo, the, the Scops and stuff. Um, but yeah, this was actually one of our, our, our good P5s, um, or so I think it is. I do have the Inquisitor Staff, which if you're thinking about doing Virago at all, you should definitely get because, you know, it's basically a tier 97, I believe, in terms of damage, I think. Not positive on that, but it's, it's really OP. Um, I've got the Spellbinder gloves in there because they're the best gloves for Virago Spellcaster gloves. I forget what they're called. 
And we got the Essence of Finality, the new necklace with the Guthic staff in there, which I'll show in a little bit me making. Um, it did cost quite a bit, so it really, it really took a bit out of the bank, but you know, I thought it was worth it just because, you know, it's a soul split amulet and reaper necklace at the same time. But so here we are and we're pushing him pretty close. You can see there are 13 minutes so far. And I believe we do get the kill soon. I'm in my sunshine rotation right now. And uh, you know, Virago, duo Virago is definitely not as hard as I thought. If you know how to trio Virago, I recommend getting a friend and just trying to duo for fun. I mean, it was really fun. We were just laughing at each other when we died because uh, we died a lot. Thankfully, nobody PK'd each other. Uh, we, you know, we're both pretty safe with that. Unlike, you know, my friend HP Warrior likes to PK me a lot. Um, if you guys watched my previous, you know, um, Road to Party at episodes with Virago, you know, get PK'd a lot in a few of those. But 13 minutes, 44 seconds. We end up getting 13 minutes and two seconds, I believe, is our fastest time. But yeah, we got six duo Virago kills in two hours. The first hour was obviously a big learning hour, but after that, um, you know, smooth sailing, four out of four kills in one hour, no failures, no deaths, no nothing. Um, it's insane money because of all the energy you get. So you're basically splitting, like basically getting like, I don't even know, like five, six mil a kill. Um, split and you know it's like 20 mil an hour so I'm gonna go on to the loot now from this episode all right so here we're just gonna be selling all our loot um, it's not all the loot I did sell some of the telos you know normal loot before but this is just like the the dormants that I got a lot of the tectonic energy that I had from doing Virago and a little bit of normal telos loot I would say this episode we made a decent amount of money. We did a lot of high tier PVM. We did get some drops, but not quite the drops we wanted. I think next episode I'm going to aim to make like, you know, get a loot tab worth like 500 mil to a bill and just have a huge episode with tons of drops. So make sure you guys turn on your notifications so um, you get notified about that and make sure to subscribe as well. Um, but we did sell the loot here for a decent amount. I did buy the Essence of Finality earlier, um, which is just with money I already had from previous episodes, so nothing really changed there. But we will be making an upgrade or two after we sell this stuff. The Staff of Sluske just wasn't even selling for 25 mil, so I decided to keep it. I believe I did end up selling it later for 21 mil. But yeah, that thing is just, you know, it's gone down so much since Staff of Sliske, uh, or since the Inquisitor Staff came out. I mean, basically people use the Inquisitor Staff for most things that require magic. Virago, Telos, those things use Inquisitor Staff, and everything else people are going to, you know, melee and stuff. But we end up buying the Blast Diffusion Boots for about 95 mil, as they're a huge upgrade for our Mage DPS, so super happy to get those look in here we also made the essence of finality and put the gothic staff in which costs about 250 mil but it's still a pretty big upgrade and we're gonna look here at the wealth evaluator it says 1.75 bill but of course it doesn't account the inquisitor staff i believe it doesn't count the essence of finality either i'm not sure um so to start off here i actually ended up doing some calphite king duos with my friend hp warrior and we you know he needed to get a perfect chitin so that's why we decided to go um, i'm using a pretty bad gear setup i'm using mage which is not really good uh, i think my aura was like dark magic or something and uh you know cow viking is honestly kind of annoying if you're not like meleeing um he just digs so much and i don't know i i used to enjoy him a lot but uh you know nowadays he's just He's, he's a little bit annoying, but I do end up getting an offhand Drygore Rapier, which was really nice. It's my first drop from Calphite King going on my collection log, and I think we got about a 20 mil split from it, or 18 mil, something like that. So it was really, really nice to get, and I'm happy I got a drop on my log. And then I ended up getting a Seismic Singularity from a Virago uh, kill, and I think we went with like seven, eight people, so it was a pretty big mass 
But uh, I did get the Singularity, which is my first drop ever from Virago. I mean, I only have like 80 Virago kills, so I got pretty lucky. I, I think I was bomb tanking for the first time, which is why I had a Yak. But uh, yeah, I was I was pretty, I, I mean, I, sh I did not deserve that at all. But uh, it was a nice split of about 20 mil or so through everybody, because I think we had like seven or eight people. But I mean... Hey, that's that's a drop for the log. I mean, it doesn't really matter because by the time you get the pet, you're you're going to have all the drops. But, you know, it's still nice to actually see a drop in my name from Virago. So I was pretty happy with that. Now, this is just a stream clip where I'm killing uh, the Varak lip boss in Elite Dungeon 2. And you guys will see what happens. I'll let my live reaction play now. My sailfish eating. Oh my gosh. Greater Fury Ability Codex. Wow. Damn, I did not expect that. That's my second one. It's not doubled, I don't think, right? I can't tell. No. Wow. I will take that for sure. I will take that. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me see if it's doubled. Not doubled, no, but... Well, that's pretty nice. Now we have, uh, let's go, let's go see. We've got two Fury. They were both separate drops, neither of them doubled. And then two Barge, which got doubled, one drop. No Flurry yet, still need the pet, but that is awesome. Well... Now we can get the uh, the barge codex, maybe. Barge codex in the same run, right? I'll have to see how much that's selling for. I, d I don't think it sells for as much as it says. All right, so you guys saw my reaction from stream there. Uh, I was pretty happy. And after this, I actually decided a little bit later to take all my loot from the Elite Dungeon two that I've made. I've been saving up the chest for quite a while um, and I decided to sell all of it just to get some cash and I felt like it was time. Uh, I did a ton of kills over a long period of time, maybe a week, week and a half, and it was pretty fun. You know, I really enjoyed Elite Dungeon 2 and the loot actually ended up being very, very good. So quite happy with a little over 200 mil from that and uh, looking forward to doing some more for the pet. I actually decided to do Telos, and when I said do Telos, I mean a lot of Telos. Uh, basically, I was trying to push my limits and get better at it. Um, I was, you know, just going to streak until I died, and previously you guys actually saw my best streak in a video, which was Road to Paria Episode 5, which I killed a lot of Telos, and I think I made it from 0 to 400%, and I actually crushed that record uh, in this video actually twice so we did a lot of telos and uh i have over a thousand kills now and i do not have much loot at all i have three orbs which you know is pretty unlucky for how i streak so basically i streak zero to death and usually i would do zero to 400 or so um which effectively i should get an orb like every two two and a half streaks if I do, or two streaks probably, if I do zero to 400. Um, and I only have three, which I've gotten over a year ago. So, you know, I did get the Dormant Staff of Sliske and Dormant Saren Godbow in Road to Party at episode five, but those are even more rare than an orb. So in a thousand Telos kills, I only have five drops, two Dormants, 
and three orbs. And I was hoping we could get a drop and I was just determined to streak as much as I could. And I probably spent, you know, I would just do Telos all day and do these streaks. And Telos, if you've never done it, it's a very stressful boss, especially when you're streaking. You have to concentrate at all times. Um, a slight mess up could kill you and end your streak. Of course, um, I'm not really too worried about the money I lose because since I streak so high, I keep 75% of my loot. So I'm never worried really about the money. That's not what really matters. It's just the time and effort I put into streaking to get up to the high end rages so I can get a drop. You lose all that progress. And, uh, you know, it's just very demotivating when you die on a streak and, uh, and potentially, you know, lose all that time you spent. But, you know, I was hopeful, as you can see, I have the death touch darts in my inventory in case something went wrong. Those were like my only two th death touch darts, and I actually do think I end up using them um, because, or at least one, because, you know, phases like phase four, phase three and phase five can have some close calls. Uh, phase three, if, so if even slightly anything messes up, uh, you can just be nuked to death instantly, so I felt like the dart was was needed to bring because I'm doing streaks this high. Might as well have the dart. As you can see, we got five mil cash there, so you can see how much money we're getting every single kill. Uh, we're getting a really good amount of money every kill once we made it to like a 30 streak or so, which is why I always recommend you should streak Telos. Um, you know, whether you're just learning it or you're a seasoned veteran, it's mostly always worth it to streak it, especially because the normal loot is actually really, really good. With the prices of orbs going down and like dormants going down, the normal loot is still exceptional. Um, you know, you'll be getting five, 10 mil a kill sometimes in just normal loot. And you know, that kill could take you five to seven minutes. Of course, you're gonna be at higher in rages. So your risk of death is much, much more. But as you can see, we have crushed the streak. We're at 522 in rage, 48 streak, which is my highest streak uh, that I have done. So um, we, I was really happy to get the zero to 500, the warden streak, since I had never gotten that, even though I had the warden title. I had never streaked that high, but um, as you can see here, we're still going. I really surprised myself how far I made it this streak. Um, as you can see, we did use a dart there. I only have one left, but we're still going. We've got the scroll bar, so that means we have tons of loot in there. And uh, 564, I was really hoping to make it to 600. I, you know, My highest in rage was 700, so I didn't really have much faith that I would make it to there or pass there. But uh, we did end up dying, sadly. Uh, 55 kill streak, I think 575%, but we still got 75 mil, no drop, so which I was extremely surprised about. Uh, but I was determined, so I decided to go back to tell us again, and I did another zero to 600 streak, a 49 streak, and we d we died again, and we didn't get any loot. We did get another 80 mil, which is nice, but no orbs, no dormants. My luck at Telos is not nearly as good as my luck at Elite Dungeons. So I'm going to definitely be doing more Elite Dungeons since my luck seems to be good there, but we may give Telos another good old try. And I actually, if you hadn't seen one of my loot videos, I did end up doing some, uh, some Legios, and I ended up actually getting all six Signets in a relatively fast fashion. I think it took me 180 kills. Um, I wanted to really just see how good they were money-wise, and if you want to see my conclusion to that, I'll link the video to my Legio's Loot video at the end of the video so you can see it. Um, but all in all, I did actually end up making a decent amount of money here. Uh, I think I made, mm, it took me 183 keys which is well, well under the drop rate to get all six signets. Uh, no pet, but that's okay. Uh, it was nice to get the kill count up, and we actually ended up making, you know, I think around 40 mil or so, and it didn't really take that long. So, you know, the luck was definitely on my side for Legios. And uh, here I am selling most of the loot, just some of the normal loot and stuff. And as you can see, the Ascension crossbow that I made is in there. And uh, yeah, if you want to know more about Legios, you can definitely go check out that loot video. Um, 
I hadn't really done them for years and years, so I wasn't sure if they were, you know, hard or not, but they were actually relatively easy. Some of them had annoying mechanics, but for the most part, you know, if you can kill God Wars 1 bosses, uh, they have, I'm pretty sure they have less health than that. Um, they, some of them are a bit dangerous, so you've got to know what you're doing. But in terms of, you know, your DPS, you really don't need much DPS at all to kill them. And, uh, you know, they're just, they're just a relatively easy boss to kill. And we sell the Ascension Crossbow here, I believe. Yep, for 158 mil. So we made a nice 40 mil from Legios. Lastly, I ended up going to do some Armadillo. And as you can see there, I got 200 mil XP and hit points. Uh, which I wasn't expecting. I absolutely had no idea that I was close to that. So that was a nice surprise. Um, but I was basically doing this armadillo task for my Reaper. Um, so I had 25 of them. So I thought I'd just come and, you know, quickly kill them. And we end up getting an armadillo buckler, which is about three mil or so. So armadillo items, you know, will always be decent in price just because of the invention materials you can get to make precise perks and stuff like that. So they're always going to be a decent price. So Armadillo is a pretty chill chill boss to just go and, you know, kind of AFK. And we end up getting some Armadillo boots here, which uh, was also a nice little bit of money. So pretty happy with how our Quick Reaper at Armadillo turned out. So if we check the Wealth Evaluator, um, it says we're over two bill for the first time, I believe, this series. I'm not sure. But I definitely do not believe this at all. Um, you know, after seeing some of the stuff, this is just not accurate. Like, seeing, looking at some items, they fluctuate. They're weird. Some items, you know, like Inquisitor Staff says it's worth nothing. So I believe we're at more like 2.5 bill or so. All right. So to start off this episode, it's going to be a lot of Dagonoth King. So I actually ended up killing about a thousand Dagonoth Kings. And uh, I decided to do this just because I wanted all three pets. Um, I haven't really done much Dagonoth Kings on EOC and they were a favorite boss of mine back in the day. And I decided I would do them and see how much money I could get from them and hopefully pick up a few pets. So I was doing this in tribrid gear, so I would switch between mage, range, and melee. As you can see here, we get a seer's ring. Um, the rings aren't worth too much uh, nowadays, sadly, like they used to be back in the day. Uh, but they're still a decent drop. I was also getting a ton of hard clues. And uh, I would pick up and note all the bones and hides. Um, so this was basically a boss I was mainly doing for the pet, uh, but I honestly ended up being pleasantly surprised, um, with the money I could make from them because the dragon hatchets are honestly worth a decent amount. They're like 2.3 mil each, or maybe they're like 3 mil each. I think they're, yeah, they're like 3 mil each actually. So a really, really good drop and they're actually fairly common. Um, you really didn't need the gear that I had when I was doing Dagnoth Kings. I, I was using pretty good gear, except I did have an Elder Rune 2H because I didn't have Drygores or a Scythe or anything at this time. So uh, I was using uh, I was using a pretty bad melee weapon and I was using a Wyvern crossbow for ranged as well. So uh, the weapons weren't that great, but I did have, you know, tier, 92 ar tier 90 armor. So... Uh, um, you definitely don't need that. You can use some sort of hybrid armor, but I didn't really care. I just wanted to kill them as fast as possible. I think for Aura, I used Majorat because it is um, the best hybrid Aura. So I use Majorat Aura a lot, and I almost actually die here and randomly get the telly because I was too uh, too stubborn to bring food. I was just soul spinning the whole time, and uh, yeah, right there I... Uh, Got pretty close to death, but but we made it out. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, DKs were honestly kind of a nice change of pace. I definitely recommend you go do them if you want something a little chill, a little nostalgic. And you can honestly make some decent money. Um, so I was honestly pretty happy. And here we actually got the Dagonoth egg drop from Dagonoth Prime. So that is one 
of the three Dagonoth King pets. I need the other two. I believe I did a thousand kills for this episode. I actually made a loot video, so I'll link that at the end of this video if you want to check that out, you know, to see more detail about everything. But I thought I'd give you a few of the highlights uh, in our Road to Party at video. So pretty decent loot, and we get the pet, which I'm really happy about because I love how the pets look uh, with their retro variant. They look like the old pets. Uh, the old Dagnoth Kings before they were updated graphically. So they are some of my favorite pets. So really happy to get that and hoping to get the other two soon. So now we're actually going to switch into some live commentary. And I'm going to be opening up some clues for you guys. Alright guys, so now we're going to actually open some hard clues. So I did say in one of my previous videos that I was kind of motivated by the treasure trail titles to open some clues and I know dies are going for a ton so I thought I would do some clues for this video so I've gone and done 50 hard clues and we can look at my uh oh first clue pretty horrible we'll reroll that and we get a master clue I am going to be very uh very excited to get master clues hoping to get a bunch so we'll see what we can get here uh, not bad. We got some costume skipping tickets. Oh, didn't mean to do that. And this is definitely a reroll here. You combo. Fortunate components are so much. They're like over a mil each. So, uh, going to be good if we can get some of those. Zamorak page. Pages aren't really worth much. We'll reroll this. Another combo. Pretty decent. Eh. Not too good again. Oh, there we got a Tan Cavalier and a Magic Compo, so two fortunate components there. I'm going to reroll this one. It's only 300k. Get some, some biscuits, 160k, 111k, and Bless Dehyde Body, so not too bad. Fortunate component there. 37 hearts to go. I'm hoping to get some more Masters. Uh, nothing there. Nothing there. Oh my goodness. What? Are these like one mil each? Who in their right mind would pay one mil for a puzzle skipping ticket? You'll basically be spending like two mil a clue. You'll literally be losing tons of money. I just, I don't understand why people do that. Reroll token hard. So I'm actually going to go and uh, get that out of the bank quick so we can use it. Uh, hard reroll token. All right. Okay, so let us use that. All right, let's keep going here. Saradome in page four. Pretty bad one, we'll reroll here. Rune Plate Legs H1, not too bad. Again, I'm wanting to see some more master clues here. Uh, we got a magic compo. Uh, pretty good. Reroll this one here. Bunch of staffs, but. Nothing too great. Ooh, Enchanted Robot, a Magic Compo. Reroll this one. What is that? Guthix Crozier, okay. The Fortunate Components are going to be nice money, even if we don't get something crazy. The Puzzle Skipping Tickets are worth so much. I, I just don't understand. Another Fortunate there. Okay, not too bad. Let's keep it going here. Combo, pretty good. Another U Comp, or... I think magic compo, yep. More puzzle skipping tickets? Good god, those are expensive. I just can't believe it. Alright, we'll use our reroll here. Guthics van braces, pretty good. 1.4 mil there. Guthics full helm and compo. Another compo. Costume skipping. Man, this is some decent money. Even if we don't get any rares. I haven't seen a master clue in a while. I'm gonna reroll this one. Really wanted to get, we have only had one master clue. Reroll this. Costume skipping tickets. Not nothing, nothing. Compo. Nothing there. 12 more clues to go. Rune helm. Another compo. Rune shield H3. We'll reroll this here. A not skipping ticket, nothing. I'll reroll those. Two magic compos, still only one master clue, which is really unlucky. Another compo, 
Nothing there. Five clues left. Oh, double fortunate there. Pretty good. And we'll reroll this. All right, another fortunate there. Rune plate skirt T. Three more clues. Uh, one master clue and almost 50 hearts is really bad. Um, Bandos cloak. Guthix chaps. And I guess we can't reroll this one because we got another 2.5 mil. So honestly, uh, fortunate component wise, pretty good, I'd have to say there. So 50 hard clues down, only one master, which is pretty depressing, as I'm pretty sure the master rate's like 1 in 15 from hards or 1 in 10. Like, I know it's not that rare from hard clues. Um, so, yeah, really unlucky there, but. Uh, we might come back with some more clues later because I'm definitely going to be doing more, uh, but we'll see what happens in the next clip. All right, guys, so we're actually going to end the video with 24 more hard clues. I did do some more, so this video is going to be a lot of clues, but I thought it was going to be interesting to change things up and maybe we can get a lucky loot. So here we go, 24 hard clues, really hoping for something decent here. But, you know, the fortunate components are honestly adding up quite a bit. So uh, those are definitely going to be nice as we get two in a row. I would like some more master clues. I'm really hoping 3.5 mil from that clue. Damn, we are getting the fortunate components. I've got rerolls on rerolls now. All right, let's use them now. Oh, my God, that is ridiculous. One mil each. Who in their right mind is buying those? Another combo. Let's re-roll. Oh my goodness. I don't think those sell. There's no way. Reroll that. And nothing good there. 1.2 mil. Not too bad. 120k. No masters still. Like, come on, please. 175k. I just think I'm just not going to get any masters. 1.3 mil. Halfway done here. 160k. Come on. Wow. Oh. Oof. That's a bad one. Let's hope we end it strong. 1.2 mil. Oh my goodness. Another three fortunate. Damn. We are doing good with the fortunates here. Another compo. Take those every time. Reroll this. Uh, nothing good there. Nothing good there. Okay, we're kind of getting some stinky ones here. Gothic's Helm. Four more to go. Another compo and a Gothic's Crozier. Nothing good there. Nothing good there. Reroll. Nothing good there. And the last one, a U combo. So honestly, not too bad there. I wanted to make an alchemical onyx because if you don't know, the alchemical onyx is actually used to make Luck of the Dwarves, Grace of the Elves, uh, the Passage of the Abyss, I think. I th uh, I'm not positive about that though. That The Passage of the Abyss might be the alchemical Hydrix, but it's made it, you can make grace of the elves and luck of the dwarves with it So I ended up uh, dissembling all those uh, treasure trail items and making the alchemical onyx and uh, After that I ended up going to a furnace and actually making this um, Into the luck of the dwarves and I ended up enchanting it and After that I ended up selling it on the GE because it honestly goes for so much. I think uh, at the end it sold for about 70 mil and uh, that would put like each treasure trail item at like 1.2 or 1.3 mil um, which is really insane because as you saw when I was opening all those hard clues I was getting you know I was getting one like honestly I think I got probably about 60 or 70 fortunate components and uh, it only took me like uh, I'm not sure we opened 75 clues this episode, so I caught a fortunate component like almost every clue, which is 1.3 mil a clue with just those. So, and the Dagnoth King items and loot, because a lot of people said they wanted to see me actually selling the loot, and then maybe, uh, you know, me and, you know, everyone watching the video, you guys, the viewers, um, could decide, you know, what you think I should buy 
if you have any suggestions. So definitely drop a comment below if you made it this far in the video and you have any suggestions on what I should buy with this money. I'm at about 300 mil now. Um, things I was looking at is like a melee, melee gear. Um, should I save it? Should I invest it? Uh, what do you guys think I should do? Leave a comment below. But yeah, we ended up selling almost all of the loot that we had saved up from Clues, Dagmoth Kings, stuff like that. Now we're going to look at the uh, Wealth Evaluator. So if we go ahead and look, it says 2.1 bill. So a decent increase from last episode. Like I said, I don't really trust this. Um, all right, guys. So to start out, we have some Corporal Beast. Now I actually made a loot video on this, so I'm not gonna show everything. Uh, you can check out that video if you want, but um, yeah, we got a lot of Onyx Bolts as you'll see here because Corp is kind of a boss that um, doesn't have the greatest rare drops. They have the sigils, but um, they're not worth a ton. They're maybe like 10 mil, but they're so extremely rare that you're not gonna get them for a long time. So I was basically doing this mostly for the pet, but the normal drops honestly add up a lot. Like every Onyx Bolt drop is like 1.3 mil, and then every Cannonball drop is like a mil. And of course, like here, there's Holy Elixirs, which I think go for about eight to 900K as well. So Corp had a lot of drops that just added up really fast. Um, we just got tons of Onyx Bolts and it was honestly pretty AFK. So I basically decided to use like Masterwork and uh, Mizuari and um, I had a certain setup where I had my old deck coil out and it would kill the core. Um, I had Potion Reservoirs and um, Vampirism Scrimshaw, uh, Penance Aura. And basically this made it so I could just use Revolution and uh, with a certain revolution bar, and I could basically AFK. Sometimes I would need to eat. It just kind of depended on uh, on if I got unluckily hit and stuff. But I also had a Mizuari, which is a tier 85 spear. And if I had a better spear, like the tier 92 spear, I probably could have fully AFK'd. Um, and I had my legendary pet actually picking up drops for me. And uh, we got another holy elixir there, so. Not nothing crazy from Corp, but the drops added up a ton, and uh, we actually ended up making, I believe, 50 mil from Corp, somewhere around that. So, um, definitely nothing to scoff at. Here's just a quick peek at the loot. Uh, I won't show a lot just because I have a whole nother video on it, but yeah, it definitely was worth our time, and it was pretty nice just to AFK and uh, chill and try to get the pet. So, wasn't really wasn't really a bad deal, and uh, I, I really enjoyed Corp, and I'll definitely be going back. Um, so I decided to do some clues. So as you can see here, um, zooming in for you, we have some hard clues, and I decided to zoom in on trying to zoom in on like more of my clips with clues and stuff because I know a lot of people actually watch these videos uh, on their phone, which I was actually surprised at. So uh, if you're in the phone gang. Uh, comment below i actually saw that somebody watched my videos on a nintendo ds so if you're the guy that's watching my videos on a nintendo ds i love you i, I really do um <laughs> but uh yeah so we decided to do some hard clues and fortunates are just so much as you saw there two is over two mil it's like over a mil for a fortunate component so um i decided you know why not do clues i've done tons of clues and with the clue titles coming out um, kind of motivated me to uh, to get going on them because I do actually have a lot of the hard clue items. I think I have uh, some gilded, I have a third age kite shield, I have a barrow's die and a shadow die. Uh, I got those a while ago, few two, three years ago, but I do still uh, have those on the log. So I'm hoping to, uh, to get a die soon and uh, maybe, maybe some third age, I don't know. The explosive barrel is gonna be very hard um, when it comes to filling out the log, but yeah, we're getting some decent fortunate components here. I really wanted to get some masters because, uh, I just really like doing master clues and you can get such good loot from them. Um, but there we get one actually right there and two magic compos. So I definitely recommend you guys to go try out some hard clues rather than elite clues. Hard clues are so much easier to get, so much faster to do, and I feel like you definitely get more fortunate components from easy clues. The only thing about easy clues is, you, or easy clues, sorry, hard clues. You get more fortunate components in hard clues than elite clues. The only thing about hard clues is you don't have a chance to get like the blood die or anything. Um, but you can still get some decent dies like the uh, shadow die and barrows die, which 
definitely uh, definitely are a decent amount. But uh, as you can see here, we don't really get anything that great, but we ended with a master clue and another fortunate. So I made a decent amount of money there uh, off the hard clues and sticking with the uh, clue loots. Um, I ended up doing some giant oyster uh, because it was that time of the month. So I actually have the monthly D&D reset token so I can do the oyster twice. Um, so if you have the monthly D&D token, definitely try to do the oyster twice because it's pretty worth it. I've seen people get dies uh, from the oyster, but sadly no dies for us. Um, so we decided to move on to some Nex. Uh, so if you don't know, Nex has a ton of good drops. And I mean a ton. I think there's over like 20 drops. Uh, Torva Plate Body is the best at 143 mil. And then there are most of the drops you're going to get are like six, seven mil, but there's a really good amount that are over 20 mil, 30 mil. And then you have the big ones like Torva Helmet, Legs, and Body, which are an insane amount. Um, so I decided to do some. I bought Ascension Crossbows uh, because they're so good um, if you use Ruby Becriminal Bolts and then switch to Dragon Becriminal Bolts. Uh, the Ruby Bolts are so, so good. And uh, they'll just start proccing 10Ks over and over again. So I definitely recommend uh, getting Ascension Crossbows or something that can use the Criminal Bolts because they're so underrated. I mean, I don't think they're underrated because a lot of people use them, but I see people with like Saren God Bows and stuff at like Nex. And uh, Ascension Crossbows are pretty much the same, if not better than the Saren God Bow, even at Nex, just because the bolts are just so overpowered. Obviously, Elder's Crossbow is like the best, but um, I really had a fun time doing Nex. I haven't done it in so long, but uh, here I was actually using a Yak, as you can see, and eventually I ended up being able to do it with a Nihil pretty easily, but uh, here was when I was first starting, so my kills were kind of sloppy. Um, another recommendation I have for Nex is to use the Armadil Godbook, uh, the Illuminated Godbook, because it is just so good. I think it's the actually the best pocket slide item. And sometimes it'll just go off and just kill an entire minion in one proc or it'll go off and in between phases and then uh, when the next phase starts you'll get a huge burst of damage so definitely should use the uh the armadil book if you're thinking about going next but yeah i just thought i'd show a full kill here just because um you know i kind of do that on these videos when i do a new boss so yeah it was pretty fun and i got my kills to about uh three three minutes to four minutes uh mostly they were under four minutes uh, once i got the hang of it and started using nihil and i think my best kill was like two minutes 58 seconds which my range dps uh is not too good i haven't used range much at all um i don't have the range tier 99 prayer so uh, i'm still learning how to range uh but i think this is honestly a good place to practice at Nex, so if you wanna, you know, get into practicing range, um, Nex is a pretty good place, and I've been having so much fun. Like, I don't know, I've just done the same bosses over and over again, you know, Telos, Araxor, uh, Elite Dungeons, and I just haven't, you know, I wanted some variety, so I said, I'm just gonna do Nex, because I haven't done it in so long, and I had so much fun. As you can see there, we get Onyx Bolts E, which are 2.9 mil every time you get that, so Nex's normal drops are honestly decent. You will get a lot of Bruise and Restores, um, but you should get a, a fair amount of Onyx Bolts and other things like Dragon Hide, uh, Magic Seeds, uh, Grimy Herbs. Um, as you can see here, we get Bruise and Restores. And then we actually get a Virtus Mask, uh, which I actually already had on the log, but I was surprised to learn that, that was 15 mil uh, for a Virtus Mask. I guess people that don't want to use Tectonic. Um, you know, we'll buy a Virtus Mask, but yeah, it was a pretty decent drop there. Um, I pretty much did about two hours of Nex and got that. So, you know, we're pretty much on drop rate. I think you should get a drop every like 20 or 30 kills. Um, so, you know, pre pretty decent there. Uh, get some uncut dragon stones. Like I said, the normal drops really add up, so you don't have to think like you're going to Nex and if you don't get a drop, you won't make any money because you definitely will make money. Here we get a hard clue, which... I thought I got a drop because of the golden beam. Um, there were quite a few trolls I had at next, but honestly, we just got insanely lucky as you'll see coming up. Um, I believe here I get trolled again, maybe? Yep, we get an elite clue here, which is uh, another golden beam, which I thought was an item, but 
That's okay, got about 800k in grimy herbs, so man, that normal loot is so nice. Um, yeah, as you can see, here's a proc of my uh, book, and we basically melt mechs. And here we get some Virtus Gloves, which is one of the worst drops you can get. It's only 6.9 mil, but honestly, uh, even if that's your only drop in the hour, I mean, that's still 7 mil, which is really decent. So um, there aren't really any drops that are absolutely horrible at next. They're all going to net you like 7 to 10 mil or so. And then, of course, you have the big drops. So, uh, yeah, more Onyx Bolts here. Pretty, pretty decent. Um, you always got to love getting the Onyx Bolts. And... Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I've said it like a million times, but this was just so refreshing um, to do next. Uh, I might actually come out with a guide on next um, if anyone would be interested because there's a lot of little, like it's easy to kill, but it's a bit hard to master. There's a lot of nuanced little things that you can do to speed up your kills in certain areas and mitigate damage. So, you know, I kind of thought about making a guide for it. And here we get a huge drop, Torva Plate Legs. I am just, I was just floored at this because I believe I got those, the Virtus Mask and the gloves in about an hour or two. And then the next hour I come and I just get these like instantly. So man, Torva Plate Legs, 86 mil, the second best drop you can get from Nex. And uh, we end up getting it. So that is going to be a huge boost to our bank and our road to a party hat. Because if you guys don't know, party hats are going up again. I believe uh, yellow party hat is about 26 bills. So we've got a lot of work to do. But uh, with the new boss coming out, I'm really hoping to, you know, ramp up the money making. Um, that's kind of why I do clues. Just because I keep out hope that I'm going to get a lucky die or something to really boost the bank. But things like Nex are very, very consistent money. So I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of Nex. And, uh, you know, especially when you get drops like I've been getting, um, you know, I feel like Nex, I'm just going to be a really good money maker. Speaking of money, there's a Pernix body, 28 mil. Uh, I have had that before again, so it's nothing new on the log, but that's one of the best items you can get again. And, uh, we get it. This was my first kill of the hour, I believe. And I got the Pernix body, so I was so happy about that. And, uh, I believe this clip is about mm, a little later, but it is actually the same hour, um, that I got the, uh, that I got the Pernix body. And, uh, as you can see here, our luck strikes again, and we get another pair of Torva plate legs. Man, I just could not believe it. Next was just dropping huge drops left and right. That's two Torva plate legs, uh, Pernix body, Virtus gloves, and Virtus mask. And I believe probably like four or five hours of next. Um, so I got a drop, I think, every hour, which of course isn't always super accurate. But if we look, we are almost at 2.4 bill, which I think we made almost 300 mil since last episode, which is not too shabby. We started off doing Legios. Now, I haven't done Legios since my loot video I made a while back, but since I had tested the fleeting boots and they seem to make Legios a lot nicer to kill, I thought, why don't I go try them out? Something that also made me want to try out Legios again is since Greater Ricochet came out, and people have been using range a ton because of Raksha, the Fleeting Boots, Greater Ricochet. Um, range items have gone up a lot. And Ascensions were 180 to 190 mil when I started doing Legios. And I believe I bought mine for like 130 mil each a few weeks ago. So they've gone up 50 or 60 mil each in just the past few weeks since Raksha was released. So I thought, hey, it might be a good idea to try some Legios because the keys hadn't actually gone up that much. Um, so there wasn't like a huge chance I was gonna lose a ton of money because the key price was kind of lacking behind the Ascension price. Uh, so I thought it was a good time to go and I do need the pets. Um, I actually have two out of the six. Uh, so during this video, we actually end up getting a pet threshold. So now our pet drop rate is better. Um, but they were really easy to kill, especially with the boots. Like I honestly did not mind it at all because 
you know, rapid firing while moving is just, I mean, especially when using range, because that's what you, you range Legios, uh, using rapid fire when moving is just a game changer because usually you would have to like snapshot and tendril, but rapid fire is just so much better. And usually you'd have to use like devotion and stuff uh, to be able to get off your rapid fire because you have to stand still. But every kill I could just rapid fire and I was getting like, you know, 15 to 20 second kills. And I believe I got like a nine second um, personal best. But honestly, these were these were just really, uh, really nice to kill. They're really easy. And um, and I just really enjoyed killing them. So they were they're honestly just a good time all around. Um, I did have her start with some bad luck. Uh, one of these signets actually took me like 140 keys. Luckily, it wasn't one of like the super expensive ones. It was Teratus, and I think it took me 177 keys actually, which is pretty bad. Um, but our luck got a little bit better. Um, so for this key, I believe this is Secundus. I could be wrong, but it took me 36 keys. And then here we have, uh, I believe, Cordis, which took me 124 keys. So there was one we got unlucky as well. Um, I think Quintus only took me 10 keys. Um, so we only spent four mil on Quintus, so I was really, really lucky there. And then the most lucky I was was with Primus. Uh, Primus took me 11 keys, and if you don't know, Primus is the most expensive key. It's almost a mil per key, and it took me 11. Uh, so we got really lucky there because if that had taken like 100 plus keys, we would have lost a ton of money. Um, so I was really happy that we got uh, got Primus out of the way because that can be really bad. Um, and then I believe our last key took us... Um, 60 I think so not too bad pretty much on rate there and uh, in total uh, we got a little unlucky but we did get lucky with Primus um, so I ended up evening out uh, dragon limbs actually cost me 14 mil which I didn't remember them being that much but I got them made them into a dragon crossbow and then we created our ascension crossbow I created the main hand because it was a little more money uh, so I wanted to get as much money out of this as possible. And I end up putting it in the GE uh, for med, but it doesn't sell. But as you'll see in a second here, it ends up selling. And we actually made about 18 to 20 mil. So not as much as I would have hoped, but I did get a little unlucky towards the end. But overall, I'm pretty happy with a 20 mil profit. Uh, this does not include the normal drops, so I may have made more like 30 mil because of the normal drops. But yeah. So like most people, I've been doing a lot of the new boss Raksha. So I started out doing a lot of duos with my friend uh, because he had a better grip on the boss than me and I could kind of play like a DPS role. And I've got to say, I've really enjoyed the new boss. At first, the prayer flicking was just so overwhelming for me. But after a while, I started to get the hang of it. And the clip you're seeing right now is one of the very first kills I got in duo. Well, a very, very old clip, so I'm using like a yak. The kills are way longer. Um, you know, we don't really have a great idea what we are doing, but... Um, you know, we were just trying to learn as much as we could of the boss. I believe this is release day. Uh, so yeah, you can see I mess up, I'm messing up literally every single prayer. They're eating my whole yak, but trust me, uh, I got a lot better, um, at this. But yeah, the boss was really, really fun. And, uh, I ended up getting really lucky with a ton of drops, which you'll see later. Um, but if you haven't done Raksha, I definitely recommend giving it a try, but you should try and duo first because it is a lot easier. Maybe you can get a friend to go with you that knows how to tank. Um, because if, you know, if somebody you know can solo, then they can probably tank pretty easily in a duo. Um, but it's way easier to learn the ropes in a duo than it is solo. And I have now done a decent amount of solos and I still need to improve. Uh, I still am learning to do solos with a Ripper Demon. Uh, right now I'm still using a Yak, even though I can do duos with uh, a Ripper. It's a bit harder. Um, 
in solos, but uh, I'm hoping to to learn that soon and uh, hoping to eventually, you know, figure out the log and get the whole log complete because, you know, I'd like to get another uh, boss collection done. They did release a Golden Reaper title, which is a title for getting all collection logs complete. So that would be something cool to go for in the future. But, you know, I'm just really happy that we finally have a new boss in RuneScape, and I really like how this boss turned out, and the drops are pretty good too. So, to start us out at Raksha, this is day of release. My friend Andrew, or Bibzuda7, as you guys may know him, ended up getting Fleeting Boots in a duo together. This was day of release, and they sold for 480 mil, and we made 240 mil split which was just really, really insane. And the luck didn't stop there. I do it with my friend HP Warrior, and we I ended up getting a Shadow Spike in my name, actually, which uh, I had not seen many Shadow Spikes drops. I think they're rarer than the boots, uh, judging by what I've seen, because um, I've seen a lot of people get, like, Fleeting Boots, Laceration Boots, and Blast Diffusion Boots, but not many, uh, not many Shadow Spike drops, so... I was absolutely super hyped with that. Um, my, this was actually the first drop I got in my name, so to go on the log, and it sold for 182 mil, um, which you know was actually more than I was expecting. This was honestly probably like three or four days after release, so I didn't expect the uh, the price of it to be that high, seeing as it just upgrades your fleeting boots into. Uh, into tier 90s, but I guess it's best in slot uh, to add to all the boots. Um, so I end up splitting uh, with my friend here, 91 mil each. So, you know, not too shabby of a, of a split there and uh, super happy to um, have that on the log. And then here um, I end up getting my first solo kill ever and I get fleeting boots. I just could not believe it. I, I just could not believe that I ended up getting fleeting boots on my first ever solo. Uh, the solo took forever because, I, of course, I was still learning, uh, but I just couldn't believe it. Fleeting boots, and uh, these actually uh, a decent amount here. Um, so we're going to look, and uh, we put them in, and... It wasn't too bad, um, obviously not the 480 mil on day of release, uh, but still 108 mil there um, for fleeting boots, which I mean, I get to keep all of that. So, so far, I think we've made a total of 450 mil uh, from Raksha uh, just off these three drops. Of course, that, that big drop, big split on day of release, we got that hours into release. So, uh, that that really helped boost it up, but still 450 mil so far. And then two solos later, I get another pair of fleeting boots. I just could not believe it at this point. It almost looks like the same clip, but I promise it's not. And uh, we end up selling these. This was, I think, the next day I did another solo, and they sold for 82 mil. So they're going down a bit, but I hope they'll stabilize around this price. But yeah, we've made about 500 mil plus off Raksha. Sadly, we didn't get any of the codexes. Greater Ricochet was going for like a bill or something, but we still ended up to get some decent drops and I'm super happy uh, with all my Raksha loot. So I have been doing a ton of Raksha since the boss came out. As of recording, I have about 450 kills on the boss since release which the boss has only been out for a month, so safe to say I've been doing a ton of this. Um, I've done the majority of it duo with my friend because, um, I don't know, duo is just a bit more enjoyable. I just like um, the option to do it in duo because there's not really a huge downside um, in doing, and I kind of like going for like personal records together to, you know, we both try to do our best so we can um, get a really good kill time. So in that sense, it's really fun. And uh, the drops have been really, really uh, good this episode. Um, so you'll see quite a few Raksha drops coming up. Um, but yeah, I've just been having a blast with Raksha. Um, probably not going to be doing like, um, 
you know, the next three episodes of Road to Party and aren't going to be tons of Raksha just because I've done so much Raksha in the last episode and this episode. Um, but I do want to eventually complete the collection log because um, the pet is uh, is really cool and um, there's just a lot of nice drops. I think Greater Ricochet is going for about 800 mil now. Um, so if you can do Raksha and you can learn to, you know, solo or go with a friend, it's definitely worth doing. Uh, my duos are definitely faster than my solos, but uh, my solos were pretty decent around four minutes. And then uh, I think my duo personal record is three minutes, 12 seconds. So uh, my friend who I duo with does have like Eldritch Crossbow and uh, Saren Godbow and all kinds of good stuff. But um, all in all, Raksha has just been, you know, amazing. And uh, as you'll see coming up, uh, we get quite a few big drops. So uh, let's get into those. All right, to start us off here, I got myself some solo Blast Diffusion boots, which honestly aren't worth that much anymore. I think I <laughs> bought my original ones for like 100 mil uh, three or four months ago. But since Raksha came out, they've gone down a lot to like 15 mil but I actually did need that for the collection log uh, because if you look here, I had the other boots and there I had all of the boots now. And uh, we actually got some laceration boots as well in a solo, which I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, they're about nine mil. And then we end up getting a greater chain ability codex in a duo, which we actually sold this and split it for 94 mil each. So it was in my name, which was really awesome. So super happy to get that 94 mil split. And then I actually did get another greater chain codex in a solo that I forgot to record. But as you can see here, I'm showing on my log, I had the one from the duo, and then I got another from a solo and I thought I was recording, but I, it turns out I wasn't. But I still wanted to get this in here to show you guys it. And uh, we actually go and sell this at the max guild and it's actually gone up quite a bit. It was like 120 mil, but uh, people I guess are maybe expecting a buff possibly. So it started to go up and we actually got 185 mil, which since it was solo, we get to keep all of that money. So a really, really good drop there. So here we end up getting an absolutely huge drop. We got the Greater Ricochet Codex in a duo. My friend actually got it as his drop, but that is the biggest split you can get from Raksha. We were so happy to get this. I mean, at the time it was going for like 700 mil. Um, this is by far the biggest single drop I think I've ever gotten in the game other than like a die, but like from a boss, I mean, there it is, Greater Ricochet Codex. We were so happy to get this because we had gotten a ton of chain codexes uh, and we're pretty dry for a while. And we actually got a new personal record uh, as we got the codex. So it was really, really insane. So here is our split for the Greater Ricochet Codex, 339 mil. Uh, just absolutely insane. Um, I was just, I was just floored by this. Uh, it's worth even more now. I believe it's worth 800 mil. So that would have been a 400 mil split, but by far the biggest drop we've gotten on this series so far. And I mean, I am just super, super thrilled with that. And uh, it doesn't end there. Trust me, there's more. So then we ended up getting another Greater Ricochet Codex. I could not believe it. My friend got it in his name again. His luck is absolutely insane. We are freaking out getting grats by the clan chat. Another Greater Ricochet Codex. And by this point, it had gone up even more. This wasn't too long after. So we were just absolutely losing our minds. We could not take it that we got another one. And here is the split for the Greater Ricochet Codex, 361.5 mil. That means, you know, all together from the two codexes, we made almost 700 mil, which is just absolutely crazy and a huge boost to our bank. 
So after this, we actually ended up getting a duo chain codex, which I didn't get on recording. Again, I thought I was recording and I wasn't, so I apologize for that. But the split for this was actually 91.5 mil, and it was my friend's drop, so it wasn't on my log or anything, but still more and more cash being added to our bank from Raksha. So in this next clip, we ended up making the biggest purchase of the series yet. We took all the money we made from Raksha and I ended up selling my Ascension crossbills. I sold my Inquisitor staff. I sold off a ton of stuff and we actually ended up paying max cash for the Eldritch crossbow. The Eldritch crossbow is absolutely insane at Raksha, at Nex, basically anywhere you can range. And since I've been ranging so much, I really just wanted to get this to try out and I think it's just going to be absolutely crazy since I plan on doing more Raksha, Nex, stuff like that. Uh, this was, I've never actually had a max cash pile and I've never spent a max cash pile. So buying this was absolutely crazy. Uh, I'm really scared that it's just gonna plummet in price even though I know it won't because it's been even higher than this at like 2.6 bill. Uh, a few weeks ago, but I'm just really excited for this and uh, we'll see what happens. I, my plan is to keep it, perk it out and keep upgrading my range gear um, and do a ton more bosses. I hope to get the tier 99 range prayer soon, but man, this was a huge purchase and we decided to go test it out somewhere that it's extremely overpowered, which is Nex. So I ended up going to next with this bad boy and I was actually dueling uh, with a clan mate um, and uh, this was absolutely crazy. This crossbow absolutely just melted next if I was soul splitting. Um, even when I was soloing, uh, Nex's health bar would be phased on the first phase before it would even appear. Um, basically when you soul split with this, you won't heal, uh, but the what you would normally heal uh, using soul split will be dealt basically as damage. So uh, the amount of burst you can get, as you can see right here, basically phase next in like two seconds is absolutely crazy. Uh, the spec is really good um, using against the minions because if you bleed them, it'll just heal you and do a ton of damage because those heals are converted to damage. Um, but yeah, this is a play set. Uh, this crossbow really excels. Um, me and my friend actually went uh, the same one I was doing Raksha with, and we actually ended up getting a minute 30 second Nex duo, which I'm sure we could have gotten a little faster, but he actually has greater ricochet. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty crazy duo, but, uh, this bow is absolutely insane at Nex. And we actually end up getting a few drops here at Nex. So the first drop we ended up getting at next was a good one, Torva Plate Legs, which uh, you know I already have on my log, but it's a really good drop, and I think it ended up uh, being about a 36 mil split for both of us. So honestly, not bad at the f at the speed uh, I was getting next kills. Um, this was a really really good drop, and uh, we ended up also getting a Zarite bow drop in the same hour, which is only seven mil, so it's like a 3.5 mil split. Um, I did also have another log, so it's nothing new, but hey, it's a Zarite bow and uh, it's not too bad. Here in the wealth evaluator and see how much money our bank is, it says 3.75 bill, which is a huge spike from last episode. I think this is like almost like a 1.3 bill spike. I think we had like 2.5 bill epi last episode. We're starting off here with some Araxor, and if the clips look a little bit different in quality, it's because they're taken from my stream, but these are the only stream clips that will be in this video. Um, but I haven't done Araxor in a long time, and the main reason is because I have the log complete. But um, I decided I wanted to, uh, to do some more. Um, I was just feeling it. I don't really like Minion Path. Minion Path was closed, so I decided to do some uh, Darkness Path. Um, so if you didn't know last episode, I bought an Eldritch Crossbow. Well, they ended up going to about 2.5 bill. So I actually ended up selling it, and I made 
over 300 mil profit and with the money i ended up buying my ascensions back and also saren godbo with some money left over just because saren godbo was actually getting me better dps at places like raksha so i decided that was the best option for now and saren godbo has actually risen in price as well so it's really nice and i really wanted to try it out on raxor because if you don't know saren godbo is insanely good for the last phase of a raxor so basically on the last phase if once you get a Rax or a 30k, he will drain your adrenaline. Um, so basically what you can do is you can get a Rax or to around 30k, you'll Saren Godbo spec, and while the spec is still going off before it hits, you'll actually be able to get in another threshold before he uh, saps your adrenaline. And uh, a Rax or should just die from 30k health almost instantly. It's really, really amazing. But Araxor was really fun using the Saren God, but I was getting really fast kill times. Um, and yeah, we're going to go into the loot now. So to start us off, um, nothing too crazy. You know, Araxor has, um, you know, it has some good drops, but it also has some drops that can just be pretty, pretty poo-poo, if you know what I'm saying. Um, Raxor, you know, the brews are always nice because brews are so expensive now, and Raxor actually drops bruise flasks. But uh, the main drops you're looking for are the uncut onyxes, which we just get right there, which are actually like a 7 mil drop now, which is really amazing. Um, and then onyx bolts are pretty good as well. And of course, you want the spider leg pieces that can be made into the spider leg to make noxious weapons. Um, and then there are the three hilts, the eye, the web, and the fang. And right now, the eye and the web aren't really worth anything, but the fang is actually worth like 150 mil because a scythe is over 300 mil at the moment. So uh, a fang is really expensive. So I was really hoping uh, we could get one of those, but it is influenced by which style you are using. And I was ranging, so um, I have the best odds of getting a eye, the magic uh, hilt, and not the fang. So I believe my chance was 25% for I or for web, 25% chance for Fang, and 50% chance for an I if I do get a hilt. So uh, we'll see how these drops go. But uh, I did a lot of racks just because I haven't done it in so long. And uh, I don't know, I haven't been there in so long. And just going back, uh, you know, I'm glad I took such a long break. Um, and it honestly made it much more fun not trying to go for the pet every time. And here in this clip, we actually end up getting the Fang. Yes, we ended up getting the Araxes Fang, which was insanely rare for uh, for us ranging. But I was super happy with this drop because this is the drop I wanted the most. I didn't actually really want to go and get a full leg piece as I've completed the collection. But with Scythe being so much, I really wanted a Fang and we ended up getting it. This is about 80 kills. 60 maybe maybe 60 to 80 kills without getting anything and we get the fang so an absolute hu huge drop about 160 to 107 all right so after this we did a decent amount of raksha and here i got some laceration boots and uh i had gotten a ton of laceration boots and was very dry my friend was laughing at me here um, as you can see, I was I actually had gotten a drop with him before and he let me keep them. So at this point, I just decided to give them to him because I owed him anyway for a last split and I was just tired of laceration boots. Um, but luckily, we ended up getting some fleeting boots um, in a duo in my name. So fleeting boots are almost 80 mil now, 75 to 80 mil. So it seems like they've settled around that price. So it's a pretty, pretty nice split and they're not too rare. So it's honestly a great thing. Um, to get from Raksha and uh, here's a really amazing drop. I felt so bad um, I needed the divert codex is one of the things I need to finish the log of Raksha I'm at about 900 kills now and my friend HP has over 1300 Raksha kills and this is the only thing he needs and I ended up getting it uh, in a duo So I ended up sniping that from him and uh, I felt bad um, but I'm sure he'll get it eventually. Don't worry. Um, so next we did more Raksha and I ended up getting another Divert. And this was after not having a Codex for almost 400 kills. So, I mean, it is a Codex, but I still am looking for the Greater Ricochet Codex in my name. Um, but that, you know, is still a decent drop. And then here I end up doing a solo. 
and I end up getting a Shadow Spike, which is a really good drop. It's about 150 mil right now. So that is a really, really good solo, and I was just super, super happy with it. So now the most crazy thing happened to me. I did an ambassador kill and I got an Eldritch crossbow stock. Now this is one of the most expensive items you can get in game as a drop. It is worth almost one bill and I was absolutely freaking out when I got this. I just could not believe it. I was meshing all my friends on discord and you will see why I can't believe it later in a minute when I show you my boss collection log for the ambassador, but this was a solo Eldritch crossbow stock. It wasn't doubled, but I can't complain at all. I was literally in disbelief. This was the first ambassador kill I did since like episode one of Road to Party Hat. So it had been a good six months since I did ambassador. Um, and boy, uh, you can see there I have 13 solo kills, right? Remember that 13 solos, every single crossbow piece. Those were all from solos, okay? Before I started my YouTube channel, I did Ambassador when it came out and I got two crossbow pieces in four solo kills. Now back then they were about 200 mil each, so it wasn't as crazy. They weren't that expensive. Um, but um, then I did what? Nine more kills and I finished the crossbow. So that is a full Eldritch crossbow solo in 13 kills absolutely insane uh it, this is ambassador is the luckiest boss i've ever been at in runescape um this is one of the biggest if not the biggest actual drop i've ever gotten in runescape it actually is um you know when i got my telus orb set that's three drops and it's like 900 mil but this is almost a bill um for one drop so absolutely insane so uh now we're gonna go and see how much it sells for all right, so this is how much the crossbow sold for. I had actually taken out the crossbow stock because I or the money because I got excited, but the crossbow stock ended up selling for 930 mil, which is just absolutely crazy. An absolute huge drop. And now we're gonna get on to selling the loot tab that I had as well. All right, so I actually ended up saying saving a pretty big loot tab. It wasn't gigantic but i decided after getting that crossbow stock i should sell it so mostly it was raksha items so i have a shadow spike in there and a lot of raksha normal so like normal drops um other than that there were some a few things like uh from the few elite dungeons that i ended up doing um elite dungeons one i did a few of those same with elite dungeons two but most of this was honestly just the loot that added up from raksha and a little bit from a Raxor, and I did some neck. Sadly, I didn't get any neck drops, but um, I did get the normal loot. So, uh, yeah, I was just rolling in the drops, and that crossbow stock just really, you know, boosted my bank a ton. And I decided, let's sell all this loot. Let's, uh, since we sold the crossbow stock, let's see how much money um that we can accumulate so uh it was it was pretty fun selling this loot tab i haven't saved a loot tab um, in a while but i plan to save one much bigger than this uh coming in the next episode or two so um be on the lookout for that because i'm gonna try to stockpile a really huge tab and uh get a ton of money but i can really say this episode has been amazing and if you look right here um we actually made one point three bill so this is the crossbow stock and the loot tab that i sold so this is the most cash i've had in runescape in a long time um of course last episode i bought the eldritch crossbow um of course like i said we did end up selling it this episode but we bought the sarin god bow so they're basically near the same price eldritch is like six seven hundred mil more but i think the sarin god bow is really going to be good um in the future but uh 1.3 bill we are really making strides in this series just a ton of money and uh yeah now we're going to get in to a few upgrades i bought and then show you the progress we made for this episode all right so after this just a quick clip here but i ended up unlocking the ingenuity of the humans uh ability which actually will allow me to use the Saren godbo while maging at telos and also while meleeing at rax so it's a really good ability and it cost me about 150 mil so i think this is going to be useful because it just of course allows me to get more use out of my Saren godbo 
All right, guys. So now is the time of the episode where we actually look at how much money we made and how much progress we made towards our party at. In this part of the episode, I will usually show you uh, the wealth evaluator, my bank, and then some of my boss logs. So if we start off here looking at our wealth evaluator, I believe last episode we ended on 3.7 bill. If we look at this episode, we are at 4.9 bill which is absolutely crazy. And keep in mind, we actually ended up buying the Ingenuity of the Humans last episode, so that took even more of our money away. So we would be at over 5 billion GP. All right, guys, so we started off at some Raksha, and we got some Laceration Boots, which is just always a troll drop. I don't know, I seem to always get trolled by Laceration Boots, but nonetheless, it is a Raksha drop. And then I actually got some fleeting boots, which is really nice. I mean, they're pretty common. I think I have like eight or nine at this point, but they're a good 50 mil. So I will definitely take it. Still looking for the pet. Um, but, you know, hopefully one day we get the pet. We're at about a thousand KC with no pet. And here we get another pair of laceration boots, which it's just a funny troll at this point. But that was about it for Raksha. Still hoping for the pet. A thousand KC. I just hope I'll get it eventually. Um, but here we actually go to some racks, which I haven't done racks uh, in a bit. I did get the Fang, but I have the collection. But I decided since I got that Fang uh, last episode that I would, you know, continue some racks and, you know, see, see if I could get lucky. And the loot's pretty decent. I mean, racks always has decent drops just because there's things like Ceridome and Bruise. Um, which really add up because they're super expensive now. And uh, there, you know, you can get some things like Rune Salvage. Onyxes are always nice. Um, but Rax is just really chill to do uh, with, you know, my range setup because I used to do Rax with Melee. And while it is pretty fast with Melee, it is a bit annoying sometimes just because um, it's a bit harder to dodge stuff. And especially doing the minion phase, uh, it can be a bit annoying. Um, but using range, it is much more chill, and there we get 15 Sarah Brews, which that's like a mill just in Sarah Brews, which, you know, really helps Rax's normal loot, seeing as they're just so common. Um, but if you haven't tried Rax with range, or if you have a Saren God Bow, it is just so nice at the last phase to use a Saren God Bow, um, to finish off Rax. Uh, so we did quite a bit of kills here. Another 1.2 mil because those Sarah Brews, they really add up. I'm not sure how much more racks I'm going to be doing in the future. Um, just because I have the collection complete and there isn't a ton, you know, of reason for me to do it. Uh, other than just to make some money. Um, with a lot of my uh, logs I'm trying to complete, racks, of course, is not one of them. But, you know, maybe we'll hop on over to racks every now and then. But I think I'm going to focus on logs like Telos. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to do a lot of Telos, a lot of Raksha, because I'm getting close to the pet. Um, but if any of you want a, a Raxor guide, I thought about making one. So if you'd like to see that, leave a comment below, because uh, I really did think, uh, think about making one. But uh, here is more Dwarfweeds and Aventos, which we seem to be getting a lot of. But, you know, it's decent. I mean... Uh, I did do some necks, which I didn't get anything notable uh, before this. Um, you know, just a normal loot. But Rax's normal loot really is just so much better uh, than necks. I actually made a... Oh, well, look at this. We get a spider leg and onyx bolts in the same kill. So I will actually have to be doing a bit more Rax if I want to finish the spider leg. But that was a really nice drop, seeing as we got the Fang last episode. And we can get a nice old leg and Onyx Bolts on top of that. So Rax, was, uh, Rax has been pretty nice to me recently, even though I don't really have a reason to do him. But if he's going to keep giving me drops like this, then boy, I, I really have to... Uh, Really have to consider um, consider doing it more, and I will uh, complete that leg piece. So um, that shouldn't be too bad to do. But of course, I have to do minion path, which you know, if you know me, I really don't like doing minion path. But we get some hydrix bolts, and for the last kill here, uh, we are going to get more Aventor and Dwarfweed. 
Now here's something I haven't done in a while, and I also made a video on this. I did some barrows. I do need the Grave Robber title, so I was hoping to get a ton of items because um, I haven't done much barrows in a long time. Uh, hopefully, was hoping for an Amulet of Forsaken, uh, but here we get an Akersay's War Mace, which none of these items at barrows are really worth a ton. I mean, there's a few pieces worth uh, a few mil, but it's mostly that amulet of Forsaken that you want. But honestly, for me, I was happy uh, just getting any drops because, um, you know, the Grave Robber title, there is a ton of items you need to get knocked out. And you actually get items quite frequently at Barrows. Uh, you can go and basically do 10 chests and you'll probably get an item. So for anyone that's, you know, mid level, uh, you know, if you have like a tier 70, tier 80 magic weapons, you can pretty much go here and use no food or prayer um, and, you know, just do barrows really, really fast. And uh, for being that level, the loot is actually pretty good just because the Amulet of Forsaken is so much money. I think it's about 60 mil or so um, because it's used for the archaeology relic. Um, and I did get an Amulet of Forsaken a few months, well, maybe like six months ago when I did my Barrow's Loot video, but I have not been back to Barrow since, so I thought it was a decent time to go. Uh, I am hoping to get the Golden Reaper title, which is get all boss collection logs done, which is going to be quite a feat. Um, you know, I'm not sure what will happen next, or what will happen first if we get the Golden Reaper title or a party hat, but we get some Varax plate legs there, which is, you know, a decent drop. Um, but yeah, a party hat is 25 bill now, uh, which is actually pretty good because they were like over 30 for all of them. Uh, and here we get a Carol's Coif, which not the most expensive item, but you know, another item that I didn't have on the log. Uh, so pretty decent. But uh, yeah, party hats have actually come down, guys. So for all you people that were saying um, in my comments that uh, I would never get a party hat, well, I knew they would eventually stabilize. Um, so next, I'm actually going to show you a loot tab. This is the loot tab that I've been saving for a long time. And as you can see here, we have the fang from last episode. We've got a spider leg. Uh, we've got like eight Raksha boots, nine Raksha boots. We've got three codexes from Raksha. I've been saving my Raksha loot for the last like 500 kills. Uh, I've got tons of stuff from Magister. I've got stuff from Corp, Barrows. Um, I've got some clue items in here. I just have tons of stuff. And this is my biggest loot tab I've ever had by far. Um, and we are going to be selling it right here. So I was super excited to sell this just because, you know, I've saved the items for so long and I wasn't sure when I was going to sell it. I said to myself, either probably when I get the Raksha pet or when I hit like a thousand Raksha kills, which. You know, I thought I was going to get the Raksha pet before I hit a thousand Raksha kills, but uh, sadly, uh, that did not happen. A thousand kills, though, we are at five Raksha thresholds, uh, which, you know, makes a pet drop like one in a hundred or something. So pretty common, um, you know, most people, I think I did a cal calculation and at my kill count, which is like a thousand and forty. Um, I think 96% of people have the Raksha pet, so really unlucky there. But luckily, uh, the pet is, you know, based on a threshold, so we will get it eventually. Um, it could take another 500 kills. Hopefully not. Hopefully we knock that out in the next episode, and hopefully I can get a greater ricochet codex uh, from Raksha and uh, knock out the collection log in the next episode as well. Greater Ricochet is going for like 1.2 bill. Uh, it's the only item other than the pet that I need to complete the Raksha log. So I'm really hoping that is something that um, I can get in the next episode. And uh, that would be a huge boost to the bank. Um, but yeah, next episode is going to be a big episode. 
Uh, this was the biggest episode, as you can see here, I'm making a scythe uh, which, with my fang, which was actually a lot of profit. I think the spider leg only costs like 140 mil and the, the scythe sells for like 370. So really a lot of profit there. A fang is just a huge drop to get from a Raxor. It's almost as much as like a Telosorb. So uh, if you're hunting Rax, uh, you know, maybe you should mage to try to get the fang. But here we have all the loot, which was over 1 billion GP in that loot tab. And I still have the spider leg and I still have some scraps of scripture. So a huge amount of cash there. All right, guys. So this is the end of today's episode. I feel like we made some decent progress. But also, I finally sold my huge loot tab that I've been saving for a long time. And uh, we made quite a bit off that. As you can see in my coin pouch, we have 1.2 bill. So I'm really not sure what I am going to do with that yet. Um, I do want to buy some upgrades eventually, but right now they're really expensive. So uh, I'm still waiting to know what to do with this, but it is a really nice cash pouch. And I did actually buy some bonds. Uh, for membership so we spent a bit a bit of money there but if we look at our wealth evaluator we are finally over the five bill mark almost at 5.1 bill and uh, a really good amount there so after this i ended up making my biggest investment in terms of an upgrade this was a huge investment it's going to take the bank value down a good bit but my friend actually got a greater ricochet codex and he offered to sell it to me for a little bit cheaper. So I think I saved about 200 mil on it or so, which was really nice of him. But we ended up paying him a bill for it. Thank you, HP, um, for greater ricochet. And uh, this is an absolutely huge upgrade. I've been debating doing this for a long time, um, but it's been used. It's done. And uh, it really hurt me to use this, but once you guys see how good Greater Ricochet is and how broken it is, please don't nerf though Jagex, I just bought it. It would be a real Jagex thing to do to nerf it right when I buy it, but it is just absolutely insane. And we actually needed the Chroming perk to go along with it um, because that basically makes it hit more and it's basically needed to use it for it to be as good as it can be. I wanted to get Chroming for Equilibrium 2, um, so I had some components here and I ended up getting just Chroming 4, but although it wasn't Chroming 4 Equilibrium 2, it still was a good perk that I can use and put on my offhand Ascension and it should be really, really good and hopefully I'll get the Chroming 4 Equilibrium 2 in the future. Um, but for now, you know, just chroming four is honestly fine with me. And uh, just so you guys can see, Greater Ricochet, um, I went to test out at Dummies here. And as you can see, it's a basic ability. And look how many times it hits with chroming. It hits so many times. I think that's like six or eight times, something like that. But this is a basic ability. I didn't even realize it was a basic uh, until right before I got it. Um, it's just insanely OP. It's a basic ability and it gains you adrenaline. Um, and the other cool thing is Hydrox bolt tips actually work with this. So if you do a greater ricochet and it hits like six times, you can go from 20% adrenaline to like 90% adrenaline um, if you're using Hydrox bolt tips. So it's just absolutely insane. Like I can't believe it. So with my newfound greater ricochet, I decided to go to Raksha because Raksha is a really good place um, to use Greater Ricochet because it's just, I mean, of course you're ranging, everyone ranges Raksha, and um, it's just a good place to test it out. Um, SGB, which I have, is really good there, and my friend's been trying to convince me HP to get Greater Ricochet for a while, so when he said he'd give me a, a discount of like 200 mil on it, I was like, all right, you know what, I'll just do it, and it was well worth it. It's honestly made the game so much fun because like I'm going for personal records, and I'm really just dealing like so much more damage. And there was always this thing that I felt with range that I would run out of abilities. So like I would use my thresholds like rapid fire, snapshot, and then I would just have to do basics um, because like let's say tendrils was down 
and uh, you know I use my SGB spec stuff like that but greater ricochet really fills the void perfectly so whenever I'm not using a threshold um, a lot of the times greater ricochet is up and it is just so good like honestly I think it's better than like rapid fire and snapshot which are thresholds so um, it just hits massively it's so good at Raksha and uh, this was such a really good kill we actually got our PR a few kills before this and as you'll see here, we actually end up getting something that I've been waiting a long time for. That's right. We end up getting the broken shackle drop at 1,036 kills, which is just absolutely huge. It is the Raksha pet. Um, uh, about 90% of people actually uh, have this by my kills. So as you can see here by this drop calculator, 96% of people have this pet by 1,035 kills, so uh, I was really, really happy to get it. Uh, he was saying that, wow, I can't believe it exists because it literally, it's been so long, I have five thresholds on the pet. So I was just honestly so happy uh, to finally get this pet. It's long overdue. If you've watched any of my streams, I've been hoping to get it for so long. And uh, we unlocked it. Now the only thing that I need left to complete the Raksha lock is the Greater Ricochet Codex. I haven't gotten the Greater Ricochet Codex in my name, although I have had some splits. Um, haven't gotten that in my name yet, so that is the last thing I need. So I'm really hoping uh, to get that soon. With Greater Ricochet, I'm now going to grind out a ton of Raksha. And oh man, I'm just so happy to get the pet. So after Raksha, I ended up wanting to try my Greater Ricochet out at more places because of just how insane it was at Raksha. So a place I decided to try this that was actually really, really good was Siryu. Now if you watched my videos before my Road to Party Ads, you know I really like Siryu. I do a lot of Elite Dungeon 1, but the thing is I could barely ever two-cycle Siryu. And usually when I did Siryu, I was using Mage. Um, but I decided to use range and my greater ricochet and it actually ended up being insanely good the greater ricochet was just what I needed um, for the crystals because like I said before uh, it's such a nice thing that if you run out of damage um, with thresholds or you run out of thresholds or adrenaline greater ricochet can be used as a basic to build adrenaline and do a ton of damage and with hydrix bolts it's insanely op and i did two cycle siryu with ease many times now at siryu which is amazing there we get a new personal record and 19 ancient scales so honestly i was just this greater ricochet has totally changed pvming for me uh, just because Siryu was something I didn't like to do because three cycles required it to be like an eight or nine minute kill, um, which adds up, uh, you know, it adds up a lot if you're doing a ton of it, you know, and now I could get the kills. As you see, there's another one with 16 ancient scales in under five minutes almost. So honestly, really, really good. And I don't know, Greater Ricochet is just honestly so OP. I mean, for instance, here ended up being my fastest kill um, to kill the crystals. So basically, uh, I usually go in, kill one, and get the other to about half, and then do the same thing. And here, we end up getting um, an under five minute kill at Siryu, which of course means that I'm killing the crystals in one cycle, but then I'm also killing Siryu really fast, um, which is really, really... Just, it's just so nice to get Siryu done so fast. And there you can see 18 ancient scales, 4 minutes, 44 seconds. Um, so Siryu is just honestly so much nicer now. And we're definitely going to be getting the log complete soon. So I ended up buying something that I've been saving a long time for. And that is the Reaper's Choice ability from Death Shop. It cost me 250 Reaper points. And it basically gives me a 1 in 5 chance to choose my Reaper task. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't have this before. It is just so amazing being able to choose your Reaper task a lot of the time. And I think it's going to pay for itself, honestly. After this, I ended up going to the Magister. Because I thought it would be a nice place to test Greater Ricochet. Um, just to see how good my DPS has really improved because of it. And I've actually never done the Magister 
that much with range, but uh, I do have about 70 scraps in the bank. And as you can see by this, uh, this kill here, it went really, really good. Um, the kill speed was just absolutely insane with Greater Ricochet. And uh, we ended up getting a 33 second kill, which shaved like 12 seconds off my personal record. Uh, which was really really good and I did this for you know about an hour or so so I didn't do too much Magister But um, I like to do them every now and then because I still have scraps in my bank like I said But we did get a few phylacteries which honestly with the prices of Kopesh's nowadays uh, The Magister is really really good money. So if you've never done Magister before it's a much safer kind of Legios type boss and, uh, you know, if you do it long enough, you're going to make a ton of money. I don't think I've ever lost money here. So, yeah, we got a few phylacteries. And, honestly, it was all around a good time. Um, but if we look at the bank value here, uh, we are at 4 bill, which is actually not too bad. I thought it was going to drop more since we spent so much money on perks and the greater ricochet. But, as you can see, 4 bill here. So, definitely decreased from last video. But, seeing that we spent, like, 1.5 bill on upgrades and stuff like that, uh... You know, it's not too bad. All right, so if you guys remember, we ended up doing a lot of Elite Dungeon 1 in the last episode. Well, I decided to go and do a bit more just because it was just so nice to do Elite Dungeons and sear you with Greater Ricochet. Um, like I said last episode, just being able to two cycle every time consistently is just so nice. I actually ended up two cycling um, without mines once, which is crazy because before I would barely if ever get a two cycle and I would have to hybrid with uh, magic and melee I've never I never was able to two cycle with just mage I could be bad but um, honestly using greater ricochet was just so nice and I ended up actually doing a bit more kills um, I think I did another three or four kills uh after last episode's progress and you know we got a decent amount of skills each time nothing too crazy but uh the chest you'll see here uh increased quite a bit and i actually decided since i was going to start the magister grind that i may as well sell the chest so i have money um so i can buy keys because the keys for magister are not cheap so if you look we had a chest full at about 82 mil 70 ancient scales which is really nice um so i ended up basically taking this out and selling it because my plan was to camp the magister if you guys don't know i have about 2500 magister kills so i've done quite a bit of magister and uh last episode i think i had 75 scraps which is not even a third of the way towards a kopesh so i decided to take the plunge and uh decided i would decide uh go and sell all of this loot um because it wasn't doing any good just sitting there and uh, I would sell it and buy the keys because they're 700k each, which is a lot, but it should be worth it. So we ended up selling all this loot and I bought a lot of Magister keys and that's where we're going to now. All right, guys, so we actually ended up going to the Magister like I had planned and I got some good drops. I ended up getting some Gloves of Passage. I think I got two uh, during these kills, um, which was the last time I needed for the log when I was completing it a long time ago and they took me forever to get. So it's funny to see me get a bunch of them now. Um, but the main thing we're looking for is the phylactery and I actually end up collecting quite a bit uh, that I'll be opening with live commentary in a little bit. Um, but if you've never done the Magister before, it's similar to Legio's. Um, he's very, very easy. You can kill him in under a minute usually if you've got decent DPS. My personal record I think is 33 seconds or something like that. But I usually just chill with Onyx Bolts and uh, kill him in like 40 seconds or so. Um, he also drops Vital Sparks, which you want to make sure you have your Vital Spark drop enhancers because you can make a lot of money from those. I ended up just selling um, most of the loot that I got from the Magister and buying more keys because you do need a ton of keys. Um, so I ended up mostly selling my loot and buying back more keys and stuff like that. Um, but all in all, he was pretty fun. The only thing I dislike about the Magister is you kind of need Reckless Aura or the Berserker Aura to do him because your hit accuracy kind of sucks. Uh, if you don't, you'll hit a lot of zeros, which is annoying. 
Um, but all in all, it's honestly one of my favorite bosses. It's just a chill DPS dummy. And uh, yeah, we're going to go to the live commentary now because I'm going to open a ton of phylacteries. All right, guys. Now, before I actually get into the loot from the phylacteries, I want to explain what a phylactery is to people who might not know. So the phylactery is an item dropped by the Magister, and you can open it to receive scraps of scripture. These scraps can be made into blessings, which you need three, and then you can make a Kopesh, which is a tier 92 melee weapon, kind of like a Drygor, but tier 92. And you can get 5, 10, 15, or 25 scraps of scripture from each phylactery, but on average you usually get 10, and you need 300 scraps of scripture to make the Kopesh. So on average you're going to need about 30 phylacteries, which is a 1 in 18 drop rate each from the Magister. So I just wanted to explain that, and now we're going to get into cracking open our phylacteries. Alright guys, so now we are going to be opening... 14 phylacteries so if we look in my bank here and we go to my scraps i have 75 so this probably won't be enough to finish the kopesh so i'll probably have to go back for a bit more but we are going to be opening up these 14 so maybe if we get insanely lucky but i'm hoping to get around 200 to 250 uh, in total and then we can finish the rest off so let's go here let's hope for not a lot of fives First one, we get 10 scraps, which is good. That's about average. Second, we get five, which not good. Third, we get 15. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we get five again. Let's keep going. 10 there. Next one, 10 again. Okay, I'll take the 10 all day. 10 again. Show me like a 25. 15. Okay, not too bad. Six left. 10 okay no just no fives and we're good there's a five let's go again another five are we gonna hit 200 okay we got 15 there i think Ten, yeah 15 next five and we'll hit 200 let's see can we end it off big we got 10 so 205 scraps of scripture so we got basically um 130 scraps from 14 phylacteries um so we're still gonna need a bit more phylacteries to go to make the kopesh but we're at 205 now and uh we'll restore some of these so as you can see um we now have two and we need 95 more scraps to make our full kobesh so we're gonna get back to that and then open up some more phylacteries all right guys so i actually ended up finishing and getting the last scraps i needed the last 100 it took about 12 phylacteries so longer than i had hoped but we now have enough blessings to make the kopesh and here we are going to craft it. It is a one-way process. And there we go. We have crafted a Kopesh. It honestly felt so good and so relieving to get this grind done. It was truly a grind. But honestly, it was really worth it. And the normal loot was just reinvested into keys. And then we put this in the GE. And this bad boy sells for 550 mil. Basically almost on the dot. So a huge boost to the bank. I'm not sure how much profit we made, but I would say a lot of the normal loot. I got tons of vital sparks, which paid for a lot of keys. So I would say anywhere from about three to 400 mil profit, which is absolutely insane. And whew, I'm just glad to have this grind done. It adds a good amount to the bank, but I've done so much Magister. And I think in the next episodes, we're going to have to go back to Telos or try to finish some of our elite dungeon logs. But Man, this is just a huge amount of money and you should really do Magister if you've never done it because you'll make a ton of cash. And this episode, we are up to 4.325 bill. So a 325 million GP gain. Most of that was from Magister, maybe a little bit from the Elite Dungeons. I still have a lot of relics uh, that I have to alk. But a nice gain there to do some Dragonkin Laboratory, which is Elite Dungeons 2, uh, because I still actually need the pet and I need the Flurry Codex, which is dropped from the first boss. Um, I did get the Greater Barge and Fury Codexes from uh, earlier in the series, and it was a nice change of pace to do... Uh, 
you know, Elite Dungeons 2 because I had done a lot of Elite Dungeons 1 in the previous episodes. So it was nice to do this with range because my range setup with Greater Ricochet, uh, I definitely got a ton of personal records on the bosses. But of course, the big items that we are looking for uh, for the Elite Dungeon 2 is we're looking for the Greater Barge Codex. Uh, which goes for a decent amount and the other codexes go for you know a little bit too and then we're also looking for that draconic energy that you will get guaranteed every kill of the blackstone dragon which really adds up not as much as the temple of aminchi but it still does add up quite a bit so if you ever go and grind out the dragonkin laboratory you know that you're going to get at least some money even if you don't get rare drops just because of that draconic energy so I like I said I ended up getting some personal records because greater ricochet is just so strong and so good um, so it was really easy to you know go in here and smash out some personal records um, the SGB and just greater ricochet just combined are just so powerful um, but yeah we smashed out some records uh, we sadly didn't get any rare drops but I did save up my elite dungeon chest uh, while I was doing this all this episode and we're going to take a look at that now. All right, so now we're going to be looking at our Dragonkin Laboratory chests. Now, if we look here, we have about 63 mil in there, which is not too bad for today's episode. Uh, my actual plan is to keep saving up this chest until we complete the log. So I still need the Flurry Codex and the pet. So it could be a while just because um, I could go pretty dry on the flurry codex just because it's from one specific boss which is the first boss but I was thinking if worse comes to worse and I have the pet and I need the codex I could always run you know the elite dungeon to the first boss kill the first boss and restart and I could probably get like seven or eight kills of that boss you know in an hour which could get me the flurry codex so that is probably an option but i do plan on saving this chest all the way until we complete the log and then selling it all and seeing the huge cash stack so that's about it for elite dungeons 2 but we're going to move on to something way juicier which is going to be raksha you guys know i've been doing raksha since release and boy do we get some good drops this episode episode. So I've been doing a lot of Raksha lately and the reason I've been doing so much is just because I've been basically doing Raksha if you guys have watched my series ever since it came out in December or so and I've just been constantly doing it and uh, I have not had a greater ricochet codex yet and that is honestly the last thing I need for the log. I did get the pet drop last episode I believe um which was really awesome because it took me 1k kills to get the pet which is extremely unlucky like most people have the pet by like four or five hundred kcs so 1k kills is very unlucky um and then to top it all off the last item that i need for the log is a greater ricochet codex so i've been grinding out a lot of raksha and uh i'll just let you guys hear my reaction here Oh my god, oh my god, holy, oh my goodness, oh my gosh, it happened, it literally happened, it literally happened, oh my gosh, oh I'm freaking out, oh I just had to pull my mic over here, we did it, we got the greater ricochet, we got the tyrannosaurus rex feet, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, I really can't, oh We've completed Raksha. We've literally completed Raksha. Oh my gosh, I gotta pick this up. Oh my gosh, guys, I can't believe it. I can't believe it right now. Oh my gosh, let's check. Let's check the the log. Whew, I'm out of breath. Raksha is done. We did it. That's the biggest drop you can get in RuneScape. We got it. I think it's like 1.5 bill. Oh my gosh. Well, let's go sell it. All right, so we ended up putting this bad boy into sell and it ended up selling for 
37 bill, which is by far the most expensive drop that I've ever gotten in RuneScape, whether it be from a clue, a boss, anything. And I believe Greater Ricochet is the most expensive boss drop you can get in the game. I mean, I guess Hazelmere Signet Ring maybe, but that's not really a boss drop and this is so man i am just so stoked to have this done and have the log complete so now we're actually going to look at kind of a recap of how much money i've made at raksha in terms of unique drops so completing the log i ended up getting nine fleeting boots three blast diffusion boots 11 laceration boots four shadow spikes one greater ricochet, three greater chains, and two diverts. Now, in total, of course, the greatest amount we made was that greater ricochet. We actually made about just as much as one other greater ricochet with all the other unique drops we had ever gotten at Raksha before that point. So greater ricochet is going to be a huge amount of your profit, but a lot of people actually get more than one greater ricochet when they do as many kills as I have. So I think our loot is a little on the low end. We did get decently lucky with the fleeting boots and the shadow spikes the fleeting boots i actually may have made a bit more than currently pictured as i priced them at around what they are now but i did remember selling some for 60 70 mil in the past and also keep in mind some of these drops were duo so i may have split one of or two of the chain codexes i may have split one or two of my spikes so this isn't total profit for me but i did also get some duo drops with my friend where he got uh, some really good drops so it kind of evens out and I would estimate after cost of supplies after cost of um, you know all the charges everything I used at Raksha um, because also there's normal loot too which adds up to around 500 to 800k a kill or so and I've done a thousand kills so I would say I probably made around four bill at Raksha three to four bill um, accounting for you know death costs uh, all my charges all my armor all the bolts because I used a lot of Hydrix bolts and Ruby Bacriminal bolts I would say around the three to four bill mark which is uh, pretty insane a suit seeing that I didn't even get that lucky with the greater ricochets so if you're wondering if Raksha is worth it it is by far worth it and even though I've completed the log I can still see myself doing Raksha in the future as long as greater ricochet stays this high in price it's definitely going to be worth doing as it's the most expensive boss drop that you can get in game you know it used to be Telos that you would go to and you know some dormants were over a bill like the dormant staff of Sliske back three four years ago but now it's a greater ricochet so insanely worth it and I'm so happy to have the log done and to get that nice boost to the bank. Alright, so now I'm going to be showing the upgrades that I bought this episode. So earlier in the past few weeks, I made the Stalker's Ring, which it only cost me about 15 or 20 mil, and it was from the Matriarchs, and I used it to test out for a video. And then I ended up making the Chandler's Ring, which is actually, you know, pretty decent. I think it actually cost me around 80 mil, um, but it's going to be pretty useful at places like Telos if I mage. And then I also made the reverse ring which cost me about 130 mil but it is best in slot for a lot of places so that's why I made it and then we also made the tough decision to take some of our 1.5 bill that we've earned from Raksha and spend about half of it on appraisal codex to get the desolation prayer this has been something I've been debating for a long time uh, because I just didn't want to lower the bank value because we're trying to get a party hat but I felt like since I made so much money this episode it was something that needed to be done and I think I just had to do it and it'll really benefit me in the long term even though I'll be losing a little bit of money now but we do have the best in slot range prayer so now you know range is my main style it's what I use pretty much everywhere so it's going to really really benefit me basically everywhere I go and I'm super super happy to to get it. 
All right, guys, so we are going to take a look at our bank value and check the bank to see what's changed. So this was a really good episode. We got the Greater Ricochet Codex and we finished the Rockshalog. This means that next episode is going to be starting new bosses. I'm hoping to do some content that I haven't done on this channel uh, before so maybe uh, you know I haven't done much Solok. I'm hoping to get into uh, a bunch of new bosses maybe I'll try to find an AOD team do some rise of the six just hoping to get into a lot of different stuff and exciting content but if we look at the bank value here we are at 4.7 bill and keep in mind this is after we unlocked the new tier 99 range prayer so uh, you know, we have made a lot of progress and we have spent a lot of money, but now we are pretty much set when it comes to range. We have a really, really good loadout and I'm going to be trying to knock out some more logs next episode. So really excited for that. So what I ended up doing was I basically went and bought 1 billion GP worth of Ascension Keys. Now the reason I decided to spend so much on Ascension Keys mainly was because I needed the pets for the log and the more Legios you kill, their threshold is 1200, so the more I killed, the better chance my pet drop would be. Um, but also I wanted to see if I could make a little money if I got lucky. Now if you don't know, there are six different Legios, each require a different key. The keys range anywhere from 380k to 750k each and each legio drops an ascension signet and you need all six signets from each legio to make an ascension crossbow so basically with all the keys i bought i was aiming to make six ascension crossbows and i decided i would continue legios until i got enough signets to make six different crossbows so what i basically did was i bought 300 of each key and then let's say i got lucky on a legio and finished that legio in 100 keys if that happened i would sell the remaining 200 keys and then buy more keys that i needed for a legio that i may have got unlucky on so in total like i said i ended up spending give or take 1 billion gp on these keys and over the course of two days i did about 3 2500 i would say legio kills which was a grind but it was honestly fun and a nice break from the bosses i usually do as legios take anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds depending on the legio if you have greater ricochet and a good range setup so you know it was pretty fun in that regard and you know eventually we did end up getting all our signets now i'm not going to show you all the loot but I will show you some of the loot. So we ended up getting all our 36 signets. It took a while and some places like Sextus, I had to buy 100 to 150 more keys, which was really unlucky. I mean, I really expect, I, well, I didn't expect, but I hope to have better luck. But on the bright side, I did end up getting two corrupted signet drops, which the corrupted signets are basically the pet. So there are six pets you need to get for the log and I ended ended up actually getting semi lucky and getting two of them um you know we're still gonna need to hunt for the other two but it shouldn't be too bad seeing as we have so much kc now and we have more thresholds uh, so i was really happy to get the two pets out of the way but we still of course need two more as for the normal loot i ended up getting 87 million gp in all the normal loot loot from all my kills if you look we got 81 serenic scales they drop a few decent things like serenic scales they drop dragon long swords they drop rune salvage onyx bolt tips nothing crazy but the normal loot does add up a bit and it did you know save me one twelfth of the billion gp that i spent on you know all the keys now to make an ascension crossbow you also need dragon crossbows which are about 
13 million GP each. So we did spend about 70 mil or so on the dragon crossbows. So essentially the normal loot we got paid for our dragon crossbows to make our ascension crossbows. Now basically to make the ascension crossbows you have to take the signets to this guy outside of the ascension uh, dungeon and he'll basically make them into ascension crossbows for you. It was really cool to just have all these signets in the bank and like I said we got the two pets so that was amazing but it was honestly just amazing as you guys saw in the thumbnail just have so many of these rare drops and getting the last signet was such a relief because that grind had just been so long but it honestly ended up paying off decently so like I said we ended up making all six into crossbows and as you can see here 1.2 billion in crossbows um, it was just crazy you know I six ascension crossbows I mean they were even more a few months ago they were like 270 280 mil each so that was really amazing and we ended up actually selling them pretty fast for around 202 mil each and uh, I think in total we ended up spending 1.1 billion on keys just because we had to buy some extra supply costs, bolt costs, stuff like that. So we did get the two pets here as well, which is nice. And we did end up making about 100 mil profit. So we could have gotten way luckier. We didn't get, we actually got kind of unlucky, but luckily we got the two pets and we made a little bit of profit. So all around, I think it was a good experience. So I ended up doing some necks, which I haven't done in a while, but oh boy, let me tell you, Greater Ricochet at necks is just insanely OP. It kills the minions almost instantly. It's just so good. Like, I didn't expect it to be this good, but killing the minions is a huge part of necks as basically you're DPSing next down till she phases and then you have to go kill the next minion to move on and it always took a while because the minions you know damage they can take is capped so you can't just like snapshot them and they die you actually have to do a certain amount of hits so with something like greater ricochet it just absolutely melts them and lets you move on to each phase super super fast not to mention using greater ricochet on nex herself is just really really good i really enjoyed uh, killing next with greater ricochet and i think my kills ended up being like two minutes and 15 to two minutes and 30 seconds each solo which is just really really nice uh seeing as i can just kill next super fast but in terms of loot we ended up getting um some onyx bolts which you know onyx bolts are nice and then somehow some way we ended up getting a really huge drop. So I don't know why, but it seems like my luck at next is just always good if you've watched my past episodes. I haven't done that many kills and I just seem to always get great loot. And we end up getting a Torva plate body, which is the absolute best drop that you can get from next. 159 mil absolutely insane uh i don't know how we just end up getting so lucky at next it's just absolutely insane but hey i'm not going to complain i will take the torva plate body for sure so after this i ended up trying to do some telos with ranged i start off at about 200 in rage because i just really didn't know what i was doing and I just wanted to give it a try because I see all kinds of videos of people doing Telos with range and it seems just super overpowered, but it does seem pretty hard. And since I've done all 1300 of my Telos kills with mage only, I was really curious to see how it went. And honestly, I did this on stream and it felt pretty decent in terms of DPS output. The only thing I had a struggle with um, was sometimes I would splash more than I would with magic, which is, you know, bound to happen because I'm using range. But the only other thing I noticed is the minions just gave me so much trouble. I didn't have that detonate or that tsunami. I know you can use chinchampas, uh, but I tried and it just didn't seem to work as well for me. So like places like phase four, I really struggled with the minions. 
And then sadly on phase five, I struggled a lot just because like I would run out of food from phase four because of all the damage I would take from the minions. And then on uh, phase five, the minions were just like, I didn't know how to clear them. I wasn't really into a good rotation. I was just, you know, doing whatever I could, you know, figure out how to do. And here I took off my shield in a stupid mistake, got the virus, and I was praying the wrong thing as well, and I ended up dying, but it was a good fun and attempt. All right, guys, so now we're gonna look at the bank, see what's changed, and see how much progress we made since last video. Now, it's only been four days since the last episode of Road to Party Hat, but if we look at the wealth evaluator, we have made almost over actually 300 mil i believe since the last episode in just four days so i did a lot of mid-level pvm this video high level pvm i changed up and did a lot of different bosses if you guys saw some of my loot from 10 hours video uh, i did a big variety and i was just in the mood to do a lot of different bosses so uh, we did do some greg which i actually don't have many things on the log but we end up getting a shadow glitch which is really really nice to get I think that's probably the best drop you can get from Greg main hand shadow glaive so not too bad and I basically did all the uh, God Wars 2 bosses I did some vindicta which I actually do have the vindicta log um, I got it a long time ago it's honestly one of the first logs I've done and if any of you are just getting into PVM vindicta is a really good boss to go to because it's not too hard uh, but you can also get some good loot as you can see here we get the dragon Rider Lance, uh, which says it's like 40 mil. I think it sold for less later, but hey, pretty good. Um, that's the best drop you can get from Vindicta, so I will take that all day. And then I did some Hellweir, which I just need the pet for the log. I have everything else, um, so I was hoping to get the pet from Hellweir. I didn't do too much of it. Um, I think probably about four hours in total and I started off very lucky and sadly I actually didn't get the drop on recording. But as you can see here, we got an Orb of the Kaiwer Elders, and then the next drop, we got another Orb of the Kaiwer Elders. My uh, file corrupted, which really sucks because, you know, it was such a cool drop, but at least I got a screenshot of the chat. But yeah, pretty good. We've gotten decent drops at all the God Wars 2 bosses. I did some Twin Furies, but didn't get too much. And then I moved on to higher level PVM to finish some things off. So then we moved on to some Araxor. Now I do have the Araxor log done, but I have been trying to complete a leg for a while. I do currently have one piece of the leg and I need two more. So I decided to go to Rax because it's pretty easy uh, with range, especially with the Saren God Bow. It really just makes things so much easier and like greater ricochet it's not like the past when i used to do racks with like a noxious longbow and stuff and i was you know just beginning pvm and my kills were like eight minutes long it's really smooth sailing at like three and a half minutes um but so far no luck but we do end up getting um a leg piece right here so this is one of the pieces we need here um, I believe this is the spider leg top. Yes, it is. So really not bad there. Super happy to see that. I haven't gotten a hilt in a while. Um, so I was hoping that I would get a leg and, you know, luckily we do end up getting one. So now I believe we just need the spider leg middle left. Uh, so I decided to do some more racks and I was actually doing racks on mobile for a video you guys might have seen But it was actually kind of enjoyable. So I kept doing it and as you can see here we do end up getting um, The spider leg piece that we needed so there it is the spider leg piece and now we have all three pieces finally uh, it was a grind. I think I had the one piece in my bank if you go back and look at my previous episodes for a long time and it's nice to get that out of the way. So after this, after all the bossing I had done, I had actually saved up enough Reaper points to buy a Hydrix. 
So I spent 300 Reaper points to buy the Hydrix, which honestly uh, didn't take too long seeing as I now have Reaper's Choice so I can pick my assignment most days. So 300 points and we get 61 million GP. So really, really good as just a passive thing. Make sure you do your Reapers, guys. It's just really good money. And now we're going to move on to some necks. So I went to next and I'm really trying to get the log done. Um, I'll show you in a minute, but we got some Torva gloves here, which is pretty nice. Um, I've been really lucky with Torva for some reason. I don't know what it is. Pernix, uh, Virtus, I just, Torva just seems to drop the most for me, uh, which is nice because Torva is really expensive compared to things like Torva or Pernix and Virtus. So really nice to get the Torva gloves because that's still 30 mil. And in terms of my log, this is what I have right now. As you can see, uh, a lot of Torva there. Um, looks like we need the Torva helm and boots still, and then I need the Pernix cowl, Pernix boots, and Virtus top. And then I luckily have never gotten a Virtus wander book, which I believe are really, really cheap. And of course, I need the pet, but with about 800 kills, I think the log is pretty decent. So I have been doing quite a bit of necks, and as you'll see here, we end up getting... Torva gloves again so it's still another 30 mil even though it doesn't really help out the log but yeah Nex has just been really really nice to me lately so after this I went and did some Raksha now why am I doing Raksha you might ask well greater ricochet is just so expensive and Raksha is just such good money and I have all this range gear even though I've completed the log as you guys can see I do only have one greater ricochet codex which for for like 1200 kills is kind of unlucky. I think it's about 1 in 500 for a specific codex. So I was hoping to have more by now, but hey, uh, that just means we got to grind some more. So I did decide to grind more Raksha. It's just easy for me now since I've done so many kills. I have the gear. Uh, I just consistently get like three and a half to four minute kills. I don't really try that hard or like really try to get super speedy kills. I just, you know, it's kind of second nature at this point from all the kills I've done. Definitely the most kills I've done in a boss, just the specific boss in the last you know six seven months i've been pretty much doing it since release um but yeah we just did a nice I, i'd say about uh five or six hours of raksha for this video so you know a decent chunk uh, i think that's about mm, I'm not sure, 70, 80 kills, something like that, probably a bit more. Um, but we end up getting some Blast Diffusion boots, which is not that great. They're the worst drop you can get from Raksha in terms of uniques. Um, I do have quite a bit of those, as well as the Laceration. Um, and then here, I think this may have actually been the same hour. We end up getting some more blast diffusion boots so yeah not really what i wanted to get blast diffusion boots twice but hey you're gonna get some duds when you're doing raksha and i'm hoping eventually we can get another greater ricochet because you know 1.3 1.5 bill whatever it is is a huge addition to the bank and that'll be really nice on our quest to a party hat so after Raksha, I decided to do some Temple of Aminchi. As you can see, we got 12 Ancient Scales there. But it's a boss that I've been enjoying doing lately just because it's decent money. Um, it's pretty consistent as you're going to get a decent amount of scales each time if you're doing solo. It's easy for me to do with range gear, so uh, that's a plus. And it's a boss that I only need the pet to complete the log. So yeah, I've been doing a bit of that, and while there aren't any crazy rare drops, like I said, the money is just really consistent with the Ancient Scales, but we didn't get anything too crazy, but a good amount of money added to the bank. Now it's time to show you guys and sell my huge loot tab that I've been saving probably for the past month. A uh, month or so so we've got everything in there like my hydrix we've got all the rare boss drops all the normal loot it's really added up as you can see at the top there's so much like onyx dust and salvage and stuff like that i have a few pets in there as well from the previous video finally completed the spider legs so just a ton to sell here and a ton to go through 
However, something I did notice uh, while we're selling this here, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this at all, but a lot of like weapons and stuff like that weren't selling at their usual price. Maybe it's just the time that I decided to sell stuff, but I was having to drop some things below like the Dragon Rider lands. Uh, I saved it for a while. As you guys saw in the clip, it was 41 mil. Uh, when I got it as a drop on the floor and it actually sold for like 29 mil So I'm not really sure what happened to Dragon Rider Lances in the past, you know, two three weeks uh, Since I got that drop, but for some reason it went down and I noticed spider leg was a little cheap as well So what do you guys think? Is it just because the Elder God Wars is coming? Maybe new uh, New stuff is coming or you know, maybe it's just a natural drop in price But nonetheless, we ended up selling the the whole loot tab which uh, I always love selling these and we got 573 mil from this loot tab so really really nice I always love saving up loot tabs and if you're somebody that doesn't have a ton of motivation to PVM or just you know maybe you want to motivate yourself to make more money save up a loot tab to a certain point or for a certain period of time let's say two weeks of PVM and it's just really fun to sell it all at the end and and uh, yeah what's the biggest loot tab you guys have ever had because I think mine's probably about like one bill or so so this one is up uh, it's pretty high up there no about a month a month and a half ago I believe the note on front was released and that means Karapok was released which was a boss that I really enjoyed doing and I loved that it was duo or trio so I could do it with friends and I have been doing a ton of Karapak let me say just so much and I've really improved at it uh, as I've gone I think I have a two minute and two second trio kill which isn't that great but I think our duo kill is like two minutes 40 seconds which I feel is pretty good I have almost 400 hard mode kills about 80 normal mode kills and uh let me just say we get a decent amount of drops but maybe not the drops we want so I did get a ton as you can see by the thumbnail of the video a ton of Carapax wrist wraps just so many uh if you didn't know every drop from Carapax is around the same drop rate it's it's kind of like Raksha, so if you got a Divert Codex, you may have missed a Greater Ricochet. They're kind of the same, and that's the same here. Uh, so I got so many wrist wraps. Even in duo, like my friend would get them as well. I think I've seen around six, and I have four wrist wraps in my name. So uh, yeah, a lot of wrist wraps. Um, but also for normal mode Karapek, I decided to do a little bit just because I wanted to try it out. This was like a few days after release and I actually end up getting the Karapek pet in normal mode. I wasn't very far in my KC at this time. I think I had around 100 KC total or something. And yeah, we end up getting the Karapek pet in normal mode, which is a huge, you know difference from Raksha if you didn't follow this series before you should go back and watch those episodes but for Raksha it took us a thousand kills to get the Raksha pet so it was kind of nice getting a pet this early and not having that hang over me however throughout all the bossing uh, we just kept getting wrist straps I just couldn't get any pieces of the Armadillo battle staff which now are over two bill for some of the pieces so I'm really hoping to continue this in the next episodes coming next week and get these huge drops but care pack was honestly really fun and we did get a ton of normal loot so we're gonna go look at all our loot now so we have a ton of loot here and I decided I would sell it all but if we're looking here we have like 300 to 400 mil in just Karapak normal drops and I know some of these might sell for a little less on the GE just because um, you know they've come into the game so much faster uh, because of Karapak but honestly the normal drops are pretty decent I did spend a decent amount of supplies like you know but criminal bolts are really expensive but the normal loot was pretty Pretty good and we of course have our four Carapex wrist wraps in our name man it became such a meme with me and my friend who I duo with because we would just be so mad when we got the wrist wraps when we were you know going to kill Carapex we'd be like all right time to get some more wrist wraps and uh yeah but the normal loot was pretty good and I ended up selling it and uh 
you know, we ha got a nice 400 mil or so. So after this, I wanted to do something different. I had done so much care pack and so much PVM. I decided I wanted to do some clues. I had a ton of clues in my bank and I've always liked doing clues, but I really don't like elite clues, but I had a decent amount of hard clues. Uh, and I also had some easy clues and fortunate components are very expensive. So if some of you are looking to make money, easy clues is a really good way to make money. Uh, but we did some clues and I actually did some live commentary openings of the clues. So we're gonna cut to the live commentary clue opening now and open a ton of clues and see if we can hit that huge die or third age. All right, guys, so we are gonna be doing a clue opening here. I've got 40 easy clues, 40 hard clues, and two master clues here. So let's get into it. First clue, 15K, nothing too crazy. Second clue, 56K, we're gonna reroll that. There we go, Bob shirt green. Nothing, we'll reroll this one, Pull that. Oh, wow. Okay, Master Clue. I really hope to get a decent amount of Masters from these. Okay. Okay, there's a Wizard Robe Skirt G. Not bad. Two Fortunates so far. Oh, speaking. There's another one. Oh, and another one. Okay, I see you, Easy Clues. Still on a bit of a drought. 900 GP. Okay, there's a Fortunate. I guess I'll keep that. It's a Bandos page, I guess. Why not? There's a Master Clue. Nice. Two Master Clues from the Easies. Was not expecting that. Reroll. 1.2 mil, not bad. So now we're gonna move on to what we really want to see, which is the hard clues. So I'm gonna be rerolling a lot just because I wanna go for that die. So if you see me reroll an okay reward, it's because I just, that's how I do it, and I just wanna try to get the super rare reward. So let's start it off. 168k, nothing too great there. 1.3 mil, not too bad. 1.2 mil, okay, I'll keep that. 100K, we'll reroll that. 2.5 mil, that's pretty good. I don't expect much, but you can always hope. 160K. 231K, definitely a reroll. 1.3 mil, can't complain. 1.3 mil, not bad. 160k magic compo 158k i'll reroll the zami kite shield 1.3 mil okay where are the master clues oh that's nice i actually don't think we have that so that's something new i think for the log 140k Gothix Helm, we've got 12 left, 1.2 mil, 246k, 142k. All right, so I cut real fast there. I actually decided to use some of my reroll or points on reroll tokens, so I had some of those. So we had a chance at, you know, these last 10 clues were rerolling a lot. So we have four rerolls now, so there's 1.3 mil, 155k reroll. 148k, let's reroll. 102k, let's reroll. 1.3 mil, we'll keep that. 154k, reroll. I'll reroll that. We've got seven clues left. Come on, 1.3 mil. There is a master clue and two puzzle. How much are these now? I don't know, but that is a ridiculous. That's got to be like over 1.5 mil. Why? That's that's really weird. Okay, keep going. Oh, yep, there's another master. I'm liking the masters. 145k. We've got four left. Show me the die. Oh! That is rare. That is... That's new. That's new for the log. That's a missed chance at third age, but... We did get a rare item. Gilded plate legs. Okay. I'll take it. Followed up with a die, though, maybe? 112k, three more, 157k, 134k, reroll, 132k, last hard clue, 245k. Okay, so now we have two master clues. I've never gotten anything really good for masters, so we'll see how it goes. 
First one, 400K. Second and last master clue, 449K. We're definitely gonna reroll this. Can we get some last clue magic? No, we cannot, 183K. So sadly, we did not get a die or any third age, but we did get gilded, which is a miss on the third age table, and we did get a ton of fortunate components. So with those fortunate components, I actually had enough to make an alchemical onyx, which if you don't know, an alchemical onyx takes 50 fortunate components, and it's used to make stuff like Luck of the Dwarves and things like that, and it's a really expensive item at about 70 mil, which makes doing clues really, really good. And something I also did was... Uh, after doing so much Karapek, I was doing my Reaper assignment almost every day at Karapek, and I ended up getting enough to buy an alchemical, not an alchemical, a normal Hydrix, which a normal Hydrix is pretty expensive as well, around the price of an alchemical Onyx. So that was a pretty nice boost to the bank there. I ended up selling them both and getting around 125 to 130 mil, so not too bad. Now, usually I start each episode doing the oyster, but since I did that ramble, I saved the oyster for later. So we did do our giant oyster, and I'm telling you guys, one day, one day, you better keep watching because one day we're going to open the episode with the oyster and we're going to get a huge die. But alas, today's episode was not the episode, but hey, we still got a little bit. But yeah, the giant oyster hasn't been kind to me lately, but that's all right. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I was going to start buying upgrades and not be afraid to spend a little money to make more in the future. One upgrade I've been putting off for a long time that I know is really, really good and is going to help me, especially when the new boss comes out tomorrow, is the Limitless Sigil. Now, if you don't know the Limitless Sigil, basically it allows you for six seconds to use thresholds with 15% adrenaline instead of being at 50%. So it's really, really nice. It's basically basically giving you a free threshold and at Karapek I believe it resets um, when you use the time warp ability so it's going to be really really good there and it's just a super good ability to have to increase your DPS and it's been a long time coming so I ended up buying it uh, it costs 2,000 vital sparks which, which is about 380 mil which is pretty expensive but it's well worth it and we get this limitless codex and if we use it which we're going to use it now that unlocks us the limitless ability it's on my account for good and this is going to be huge for you know the new boss all bosses it's really going to help me get speedier kills and maybe be able to you know do better at places like telos and things like that which can make me even more money in the future so i've preached this in all my guides that limitless is so good but i haven't been able to pull the trigger on it myself and i thought now was the time i know wasware will be happy that i finally bought it this episode is all about the arch glacier and let me tell you i had so much fun learning this new boss i've always loved the streaking mechanic at telos and the enraged mechanics there's also something super nice about having a big loot chest piling up and risking some of your loot i always loved that about telos however what i didn't like about telos at least for me is how many phases and how long the boss fight is. This is because at lower enrages with 4 phases or even 5 phases at low 100%, it was just really boring for me personally and you would just go through the motions and you'd still be time gated and have some decently long kills. Well, the Arch Glacier, that is not the case. You can kill the low enrage boss in under a minute if your DPS is good enough, and combined with the streaking and enrage mechanic, the Arch Glacier may be my favorite boss in RuneScape right now. Actually, the more that I think about it, it is my favorite boss in RuneScape right now. It is absolutely so much fun. So, release day of the Arch Glacier, August 31st. We did some normal mode to really practice, but then we moved right onto hard mode, and I actually ended up streaking up to 300% or so on my first streak before finally dying. So I had some really good confidence starting out, and somewhere around a few days after release, hard mode loot was buffed, and that made it much better and more worth it to streak hard mode. I ended up actually getting a rare drop pretty early, which was the Artifact of Lang. 
Now this can be used to upgrade gloves like the Nightmare Gauntlets, the Gloves of Passage, and Carapax Wrist Wraps to tier 90 gloves, which is quite nice if you use these gloves a lot. I actually just ended up keeping mine because I didn't want to make the gloves right away and it wasn't such a huge drop anyway, maybe around 10 to 20 mil GP. We did end up on the second day of the Arch Glacier getting the 500% in Rage Kill, which got us the Iceborne title, which is similar to the Warden title at Telos. This marks a 500% in Rage Kill, and it's super amazing to get this. PVM titles always feel great to get and I know a lot of people might have this but it's really a fun goal to strive for and once you get it, it feels really like a satisfying moment. Now the Arch Glacier also has silver and gold titles of the Iceborne for 2000% rage and 4000%. Not that I'll be getting those anytime soon but it's a nice goal to strive for. Now we're moving on to what you all came for, the loot, the path to our party hat. Well, the Arch Glacier is great for this. I ended up doing a few streaks and made some decent money, but I recently started a very long streak starting all the way from 0% in Rage. Now the rare drops you want to look out for are the Core of Lang, which is the main drop used to make the tier 95 weapons, which are going for like 1.6 bill. You do need some Dark Nylas, which are used to make uh, the tier 95 as well and the tier 85 so those are needed because the core is untradeable so you need to get those first to be able to sell the tier 95 if you were to get it so i really ended up getting the boss down a lot during this streak learning the mechanics and just getting into such a rhythm with my rotations and my damage and we ended up streaking pretty far and getting some really good loot i'm gonna play a short montage of the loot you can watch it pile up on our streak and and maybe just maybe we'll get something good. Alright, so this is where our streak 
currently stands. Yes, the streak is still alive. I did not die. We are at a 60 streak over 700% in rage, which is close to where my highest in rage is. So really, really proud of this streak and really hoping to keep it going in the next episode and hopefully get a huge drop. But as you can see, it's already really piling up. I'm starting to get like five to 10 mil a kill, which for kills taking like four minutes, that is just absolutely crazy. The GP per hour is just so big. Um, but yeah, now we're gonna look at a little bit of loot that I actually do have in my bank that I've claimed from previous streaks. So if we look at this loot, as you can see, it says 77 mil, but it isn't accurate and neither is the loot in the uh, loot chest from my current streak, just because some of the items are, you know, basically worthless like these spirit weed seeds are not worth that much they're like one gp each now um, but things like hydrix bolt tips water battle staffs water talismans those are actually still selling things with alk value so there is still a lot of value there but not quite 77 mil and then if we look at my arch glacier log now we're going to take a look and i have 217 hard mode kills 34 normal mode kills uh one minute 16 second hard mode kill i haven't really tried for speed kills but our highest kill streak was 41 but now we are on a 60 streak highest in rage 874 percent and then if we look at the collection lug we don't have anything i haven't even got got dark nihilus yet this streak that i'm currently on i got three at like 30 percent rage so i just decided to streak them um but yeah hopefully we'll get a bunch of those soon and we have the lang artifact and the glacier remnants but we don't have the frozen core of lang and i have not made any of the items but hey you know i'm really really enjoying this boss and i really hope this streak in the next episode ends up making us a ton of money so make sure you subscribe so you can see that streak can continued maybe we'll die right away but hopefully i can keep it going so now we're gonna take a look at our bank and just wrap up our progress so taking a look at our wealth evaluator we are still basically around the same wealth as we were uh in the last episode however we do have this streak which has almost 200 mil loot in it so it does not account for that and this was all done in the past you know three days the streak has taken me only basically one day so for one day of work that gp is really really good so like my previous episode i've been doing a lot of the arch glacier we got the 500 percent iceborne title last episode and this episode i wanted to see how far i could push my enrage and just generally challenge myself I really love bosses that have the streak or enrage mechanic, like I guess only Telos, but uh, there was a tweet recently from Mod Ramen that basically asked if theoretically we added enrage or streak mechanics to more bosses, which bosses would you want? And I replied all of them. Um, I guess he maybe wasn't talking about streaking and more enrage, but generally the Telos system I just love so much. And the reason I love it is because first you can streak and there's some Something about seeing the rewards just pile up in your chest it's really really nice similar to elite dungeons a little bit but then the fact that you're streaking kill streaks in a row and it progressively gets harder the fact that you can challenge yourself and risk your loot for even more rewards uh, you don't have to risk your loot you have to balance when to claim when to continue the fact that you can push for enrage to you know go higher and higher and really challenge yourself and unlock those titles like the silver iceborne gold iceborne uh, silver warden gold warden warden title all that stuff just makes for an amazing experience and that's really one of the reasons why i like this boss so much in general so speaking of challenging myself i wanted to challenge myself and i basically ended up getting to around 700 percent or so in rage but my loot was pretty bad when i was pushing in rage at the arch glacier as streaking seems to influence your loot a lot more than enrage does 
So what I decided to do was just start at 0% in rage and just streak as long as I could. Well, I actually really ended up surprising myself with this streak, and as we kept streaking and I was sure I was going to die, I got to 800% in rage. Which was past my personal best, but then I got up to 900% in rage, and then finally we got really close to 1k in rage, and I finally went in for the 1000% kill, and I'm not going to lie, I was pretty nervous, but we did end up getting the kill and streaking all the way from 0% to 1000% in rage on an 87 kill streak. Now sadly looking at the chest you can see we did not get any rare drops but we did get around 260 mil which is not too bad although a lot of these items will sell for less but nonetheless I was super super proud of this streak. After this, I decided that I would change up my strategy a bit for streaking the Glacier. So this is because once you get to like 700% in rage, the fights become a good amount longer as the HP increases and you're dealt more damage. And I was spending way more on supplies, and that was mostly because I was at so high in rage I would use a bunch of Hydrix bolts because they really helped a ton for those higher in rage kills, which ended up costing me a lot of money. So because of this, and the fact that I didn't seem like the Enrage had much effect on like the unique drops, I decided to start streaking from 0 to 650%. Uh, this was because I was confident I could pretty easily do this without dying and I'd be able to get some decent normal loot while conserving supplies and time. For instance, I felt like for me it was more worth it to do like 2 0 to 500 streaks than 1 streak from 0 to 1000, and based on my results, it seemed like it was. So we ended up doing a few streaks from 0 to 600% in rage without any real loot. However, we did get 11 Dark Nylas at 611% in rage, which was super nice as Dark Nylas are used to make the tier 95 weapons. So if you get the core of Lang Drop, you're going to need Dark Nylas, and a lot of people are really struggling to get them. So safe to say, they're a pretty good drop and were definitely worth claiming my streak for. Now after this, the unthinkable happened, we ended up getting the core of Lang on a 52 kill streak at 638% in rage, and I was so excited. I was PMing this to all my friends. It felt so, so good. It was such a huge drop. I've never really been super lucky on release day bosses. Raksha took me 1,200 kills to get Greater Ricochet, as you guys know. So uh, we were at about 400 hard mo KC about two weeks after the release and at the time of this the core is single-handedly the biggest drop I've ever gotten in RuneScape. I did get the Greater Ricochet Codex but at the time it was around 1.3 bill so this core of Lang for me is without a doubt the most expensive drop I have ever gotten. So now all we had left to do was go and make this tier 95. So to make the weapon, you need 10 Dark Nylas, 7,500 Glacier Remnants, the tier 85 weapon, and of course the Frozen Core of Lang. So we ended up buying the tier 85 offhand for around 40 million GP or so, and then we crafted this bad boy and it felt so good. It really brought me back memories of me crafting my first and basically my only weapon at Telos, which sold for around 1 bill back in 2018 after a very long grind, so it's an amazing feeling to say the least, and I was super lucky to have gotten this and the Nylas so early on in my KC. So we put the tier 95 in the GE and it sold for over 1.5 billion GP which is huge for the series. It's by far the most money that we've made in one episode and the bank value is really going to reflect that at the end of the video. So now that I got this drop, what about all the commons I had stacked up this whole time? Well, now we're going to go look at almost all of the commons I got from 400 KC of Arch Glacier in hard mode, and I sold a bit for supplies, but I'd say I still have around 75% of all the commons I've gotten thus far, so let's go take a look. Alright, so looking at the commons, the value comes out to 475 mil, which is absolutely huge for commons. However, some things need to be noted, so spirit weed seeds are basically not worth much at all. Bird's nests are a bit cheaper, same with water talismans and bainite stone spirits. So I would say the value of these commons is closer to the 350 to 375 mil mark in commons, which is still really good at like 1 mil plus per kill since I sold off a bit of them before. 
but we of course did also get the laying artifact early on as well so even if you don't get any rare drops from the arch glacier if you streak from like zero to five hundred percent you're gonna get some pretty decent commons especially if you hit a ton of oracalcum salvage which is one of the most expensive commons you can get so what did I do with all the money we earned today? Well, I had spent a ton on supplies doing the Arch Glacier, and I was pretty poor before this drop with like 10 million GP in my cash pouch, if not less at some points, which is why I had to constantly sell some of my loot when I got it to buy even more supplies. So what I decided to do was to stock up drastically on supplies so that we could start PVMing all the time and making tons of money in the future episodes without having to worry. So I ended up spending around 200 mil to buy a ton of herblore supplies so i bought enough to make 1000 elder overloads completely from scratch and also enough supplies to make 400 adrenaline renewal potions as well this should last me for a good while especially the overloads and this drop comes at a great time because i am basically almost out of overloads and adrenaline potions completely I also decided to buy up a ton of supplies and I bought a bunch of brews, restores, sailfish, vuln bombs, prayer potions, ripper demons, incense sticks, and most notably as well 5000 hydrix bolts since they are so good at the arch glacier and I always run out. I spent almost 400 mil on all these supplies so this along with the overloads we ended up spending around 600 mil on supplies but it should last us a very long time so I'm super happy to get this drop and now I can be set up with a ton of supplies and really not have to worry about them for a while. So now we're going to take a look at our Arch Glacier collection log. So for the Arch Glacier, we have 493 hard mode kills, and our highest streak was the 86 kill streak, and our highest in rage is still 1,002%. In terms of loot, we have 22 Dark Nylas, which isn't too bad at all, so I can make another tier 95 if I were to get another core. We have one core of Lang and one Lang artifact, which I also got early on, and then it also shows that tier 95 that we made. So basically for me to complete the log I'll need 28 more Dark Nylas and one more Core of Lang and then I still have not received a scripture of when so I'll need that and then I also haven't gotten the pet yet so I'll need to get that too. But this boss has been so enjoyable so far and I'm really looking forward to completing this log soon. So we basically made over max cash in this video in terms of loot, so let us go and check out how much our bank has changed. So if we look at our wealth evaluator, it's over 6 billion GP for the first time ever in this series, which is just super great. To start today's episode, we're actually doing something I haven't done in a long time, and that is kill Solak. I haven't really killed much Solak at all in general, and I decided to go with my friend for about an hour or so just to see how we would do. I really just had to relearn the boss as I only had 30 KC. And I have probably not been to Solok since like episode 4 of Road to Party at, so it's been like a year almost. So our kills didn't go that bad. Of course it took a while to get used to everything again. I don't have an Eldritch Crossbow, so I wasn't sure how range was going to do, but it was pretty decent during the beginning phases. We did fail to skip the core barely, but I'm sure if we had a better rotation, we could have gotten the core in one cycle. As for the last phase, well, we did fail a few times. I have not done Solok no realming before, which means you don't go into the realm at all, you just DPS down Solok and hope he dies before he instant kills you. Most people that do this have either max melee or an Eldritch Crossbow, and it seemed like it was just really tough to do it without an Eldritch Crossbow, even if I got my rotation absolutely perfect. We did actually manage to barely get one kill no realm though, which I was pretty happy with, and my friend ended up getting a cluster of Grimoire paper as well which was pretty funny because that's like a hundred mil in one drop and that's the only kill we got. We didn't do any after that because we pretty much assessed the situation and figured I need an Eldritch Crossbow so we can reliably do no realms. However it was pretty fun to try and who knows maybe we'll go back to Solok soon. So now we are headed to the Arch Glacor. Now this is a boss that I have been doing the past couple episodes and I decided I would finally just, you know, go and streak as far as I could. Just really try to push myself to streak super far and get to a higher enrage than I've ever gotten to before. 
So sped up in the background, you can see the streak that I started all the way at zero. And before the streak, my highest in rage was about 1100 or 1150. And I was hoping to maybe get to like an 100 streak to pass that. My previous highest streak was 85 that we got in the previous episode. So I really, really wanted to try to beat that. And we actually end up getting a dark Nyla's drop here, which we get 15 at 7. 784 in rage, 67 kill streak. And if you die, you lose 75% of your loot. So I think I would lose three or four. So I decided we're gonna risk it. And as you can see, we actually ended up risking it for quite a while, 99 streak, which is technically an 100 streak. So we did get the 100 streak and this is my highest in rage, 1160. So really, really nice. And I decided to continue risking the Nylas cause I would only lose a few and I have a decent amount in my bank. Um, so we made it actually, as you can see here, all the way up to 1500% and we get more Dark Nihilus here, which is absolutely crazy. So as you can see here, we're at a 132 streak, 1525% in rage, a 450 mil chest, by far my longest streak, my highest in rage by like 400%. I was just on a roll with this streak. We got more Dark Nihilus and now I think I would lose about eight or so if I died. Um, so I decided what I was gonna do was I was just gonna risk it because I was only lose eight. I have enough for the log even if I die. I don't need any more Nylas. I'll have like 40 or 50 in the bank. Uh, so we end up streaking more and getting to 1566 in rage and then sadly I make this mistake where I walk too fast up past the pillars. I should have walked to the side and waited, but I didn't. I thought they would be gone and they weren't and we sadly end up dying. But it's not all doom and gloom. If we look at the loot here, we still had 358 mil, 32 dark nylas. I already have enough in the bank basically for the log, so I'm fine with that. Still get like 358 mil, which is really, really good. Um, the normal loot really added up. Of course, we did lose a little, but hey, I decided I would risk it for the video. And yeah, 136 skill uh, kill streak 0 to 1560% in rage. We beat my highest in rage by like 400%, so way, way more than I could have ever thought. So after this, I decided I would finally make the push to 2000% in rage. Uh, I wasn't sure if I would ever be able to do this. Uh, so if you get to 2000% in rage at the Arch Glacier, you get the Silver Iceborne title. Now this would be by far my biggest PVM achievement on RuneScape thus far. And as you saw before, we made a ton of money, but this time I wasn't streaking from zero. I was strictly pushing, but I did end up getting some streaks in here. Now it was actually uh, pretty hard. Um, but at the same time, I started to get used to it, uh, you know, using less food. And we actually ended up getting all the way to 2000%, well, 1995% on a kill streak, um, as you see here, 1982. And then we got one more kill for 1995. And now it is finally time to go in for my first ever 2000% Arch Glacier kill and see if we can take this title home.
so 45,000 health left. Can we get the kill without messing something up or dying at the very end? Yes, we can. The Silver Iceborne title has been achieved, finally. This took me many, many days of grinding all day, and we finally got it, the Silver Iceborne title. Man, this was by far my biggest achievement that I've ever gotten in RuneScape. It felt, it was just so much fun, uh, you know, going for that goal. As for Gold Iceborne, I don't know if I'll ever get that. But for Silver, it just pushing myself to learn more, to get better, um, and to go for this goal was super nice. And the fact that I streaked like 400% in rage from 1100 to over 1500 uh, made it even better since I made so much money doing that over like 400 mil plus even more from all the other kills I've done learning the Glacier. It was just a great experience and I'm just so happy I have this title. So after this, I decided I would go and use some of my Nylas to make the tier 85 weapons because I actually did not have those for the collection log. So I went ahead and I bought the glorious bars and the blackstone hearts that you need to make these. Then I went and I made all the both tier 85s because I didn't have either, like I said. And then I also ended up making uh, one of the Glacier's adornments, which is um, one of the cosmetics that you actually need uh, that you unlock from the Glacier, but you need all of them to get the log complete. So I decided to make one of those with my spare Nylas as well. So looking at the log here, we still need the scripture and then I still need to make a few more of the adornments, which I do later. So after this, I wasn't interested in pushing in rage anymore, of course, since I just got Silver Iceborne. So I decided just to streak from zero and see what loot I can get. Um, hoping for the core of Lang is one of the last things I need, but we actually end up getting uh, the scripture of Wen, which is one of the items I had not gotten in almost a thousand kills. It's the only other item I need other than the core of Lang. So to get that, that was amazing. And I basically end up, ended up streaking this for a few kills, but then I just decided to claim it because it, I don't have it for the log yet and I could get pretty unlucky and die. So I decided just to claim it after a few kills and now all we need is the core of Lang. So something else that I forgot to mention is I actually ended up getting the Arch Glacier pet drop. Now the reason that I don't have a recording of this to show you is because when you get the Arch Glacier pet drop it's actually shown in your chat box and not like from the loot itself. So I didn't even realize that I had got it and I didn't record but it did show in the chat box that you get the Glacier core I think is what it's called um, because they don't like put it in the chest while you're on a a streak so I did end up getting this around 700 or so kills I believe and uh, they now have a little option so if you examine it it says how many kills you've done your best streak and your enrage which is pretty cool it's pretty crazy to see the 2000 on there but yeah I just wanted to also mention that I did get the pet so it's really really nice and I only need a few things left for the log so sadly after this I ended up streaking again getting all the way to almost a thousand percent on an 100 streak but I ended up sadly dying to a dumb mistake that's usually how my streaks end but 83 kill streak and you can see in the chest 131 mil and we did actually get a Nihilus drop I think we lost like three or four so not too bad seeing as I have the log finish for Nihilus um, so not too bad right there so now we're going to take a look at my Glacier log and my loot tab from the Glacier. So if we look real fast, we have 965 hard mode, 2000 percent our highest in rage within 136 kill streak. And here is our log. So we have every single thing. We've got a spare like 32 Nylas or whatever in the bank. And the only thing we need is one more frozen core of Lang. I got this at like 200 KC. So we are almost at a thousand without one. We finally got the book. So that is what we need. I really wanted to finish it this episode, but I did so much Glacier and I just could not get the core. Um, but if we look in our bank, we're going to check this huge loot tab that I have right here. So we're basically going to take out everything here. Um, this is pretty much the drops from I don't even know how many Glacier kills. I don't think I've really sold hardly any loot. So if we look here, 
we are over 1.2, almost 1.2 billion in loot. If you add the coins that I get from uh, doing the kills, it would probably put us over. So that is pretty nice. And we have 36 Nylas, which will means we can make, you know, three tier 95s if we ever do get the cores. If we look at the wealth evaluator, we are at 6.2 bill. Again, this is not always super accurate, but we have made a good amount of money at the Glacier. That 1.2 bill in just basically normal loot, no tier 95. I did make a tier 95 uh, when Glacier first came out that I sold for 1.4 bill. So I would estimate so far through my 1,000 or so Glacier kills, I've made probably about three bill with only one core. So we've definitely made much over max cash doing the Glacier. And yeah, I got the Silver Iceborne title, which was the main point of this episode where we also made a ton of money doing it so i hope you guys enjoy this episode again if you want to enter the giveaway subscribe like comment uh your luckiest drops and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode it was a lot of time in the making i'm hoping next episode we just finish off with the core super fast finish the glacier and then move on to a ton of new bosses and stuff and as you guys know i am only a frozen core of laying off getting the complete log so this one I really wanted to complete and after getting Silver Iceborne last episode I decided I would do some streaking at the Glacier and if you've watched any of my streams I've been doing again recently on YouTube you know we did a ton of medium sized streaks trying to get the Frozen Core of Lang but to no avail. However, we did actually end up getting a Scripture of Wind Drop, which is the second best drop that you can get from the Arch Glacier, and it sells for like 130 mil as of recording, which honestly is not a bad drop considering you could get something like the Lang Artifact, which doesn't sell for much at all, so I ended up claiming this just because I didn't care to continue streaking. And after this, I decided even though we didn't have the core and log complete yet, I felt like it was time to finally sell my giant loot tab of Glacier Common Loots. I was running pretty low on money and I felt with double XP approaching when I recorded this section that it would be a great time to sell all the loot as things like these summoning focuses and stuff had gone up a good bit in price. So this massive loot tab was a culmination of doing the Arch Glacier since release and was probably around 700 or so kills in commons from streaking basically as high as I could or until I died. I ended up selling all the loot and in total from this loot we made 1 billion GP from just the common drops from the Arch Glacier and there were a few tier 85 offhands but they didn't sell for that much so this isn't including the core that we previously got or any of the Nihilus we have, just basically one scripture and all the commons, so this was really really good money and goes to show that streaking the Glacier really high can get you a ton of great common drops. So after this, I actually did do a from scratch challenge on my channel that some of you may have seen and I decided to do some revenants during it. And I didn't expect this, but something absolutely crazy happened. We ended up, in typical Nuz Nuz fashion, getting a Stadius Warhammer drop from the Revenant Imp. Yes, you heard me right, a Revenant Imp. I was absolutely losing my mind at this point because the Imp rarely drops anything, let alone the best drop you can get from Revenants. This was just crazy. I got out of there as fast as I could, and I think I ended up selling the Stadius Warhammer for around 180 million which was a decent bit of cash added to our bank and yeah this was just an unexpected drop especially because I don't do revenants much on this series but hey I will definitely take the loot and I got super super lucky here. Now as I said before Zuck was just released so we ended up trying to kill some Zuck on the day of release and I basically decided to stick to normal mode Zuck because I didn't want to make the plunge into hard mode just yet. But don't worry, next episode we'll probably end up having some hard mode. So we did a lot of normal mode kills and I actually ended up enjoying the boss quite a bit. I would say it's pretty similar to how elite dungeons work in the way that you have to kill mobs to get to the final boss. I do also like how the loot accumulates in a chest and it seems to be pretty decent normal drops. 
However, the boss does get a bit tedious just seeing as you have to constantly go through all the waves over and over. It's hard for me to kill the boss for more than a few hours at a time, so I don't think it's something that I'll be camping constantly for 10 hours a day, but more of doing a few hours each day to get kills over time. Now the loot was actually decent for normal mode and I have a loot tab in my bank that is currently accumulating as you can see and I'm hoping to save this one up until we have the whole log complete. So it's safe to say it's going to take a long time but it should be an absolutely giant loot tab by the end of it. So in total at Zuck we ended up doing 58 normal mode kills and although we did not get any unique drops. Since I did those kills, Jagex actually decided to buff the drop rates at Zuck, so I'm hoping next episode we will have some big drops to show for it. But all in all, Zuck was actually a pretty fun release and I definitely enjoyed my time there and hopefully I'll knock out some hard mode in the next episode. So as I mentioned at the start, we did do a bit of Krosis with my two friends and we ended up doing some trio kills, which I know it's not optimal, but we are trying to learn the boss together and it was actually a pretty fun time. We ended up getting it down and we got around 8 minute kills and although none of us got any rare drops, the loot from Krosis was actually much better than I expected. I ended up getting around 13 mil for like an hour and a half or so, but also the resonant anima of Bix sells for like 25 to 30k each now, so we got like another 7 mil from that, so basically like 20 plus mil in an hour and a half from just normal drops for us skilling boss was actually really surprising and hopefully I'll start trying to get some big items like the crit bloom or things like that because Crit Bloom is going for a ton right now. Now I mentioned Solok in the beginning of the video and yes we did do some Solok which I haven't done in a long time like probably a year and although our kills weren't super fast I was kind of trying to reteach myself the boss and I'm happy to say we did get some successful trio kills. We didn't get any crazy loot because we only did like an hour but I was happy to finally get myself some KC at Solok again and kind of relearn the basics and hopefully in the future we can start really grinding it out again to try to complete the log or get those blightbound crossbows because they're going for a ton right now as well. Now for the next clip I'd like to give a little bit of context. Back in my previous Road to Party at episode when Carapic came out, I think it was episode 19, you'll know that I did around 400 duo Carapic kills or so with no drops except Carapic's wrist wraps, no splits either. It kind of became a meme because all I got with my duo partner was wrist wraps. Well my duo partner actually after that ended up going 1.2k kills dry. He did around 500 plus kills duo with me and then most of his other kills were either solo or duo with somebody else and he got no staff splits at all, none in his name and none for his partners or none solo. So as I said with Zuck, Jagex actually buffed the drop rates with Karapek as well for the staff pieces so we ended up trying to give it another shot. And yes, as you probably expected, oh my gosh, on the last kill of our hour, it finally happened. We got the fractured staff of Arbnil piece, one third of the staff. My friend got it in his name as his drop, which I was completely fine with and happy for him, seeing as he grinded so many kills, 1.2k without a split. And as you can see by the chat box and us typing, we were freaking out. It had been such a long grind, especially for him, and he had been grinding for so long, and and I also had never seen a drop at Karapek other than wrist wraps and like 500 plus kills. So I never got a codex or scripture or anything like that. So this was my first drop as well. And this was just a long time coming and we were so happy to finally get it. Now he ended up selling the staff piece for around 2 billion GP and that gave us a huge 1 billion GP split which I believe was our biggest split yet during this series. And also with selling our Glacier tab and getting the stat hammer. This episode we made over like max cash which is just amazing and yeah this was just a great drop to get and it's one that's been a long time coming especially for him so I'm so happy we ended up finally getting it. So now we're gonna look at my bank value, what we earned this episode and some other stuff. So I think last episode we were around 6 bill or so if I'm not mistaken and if we look at the wealth evader now 
the wealth evaluator now we are at 8 billion gp so a huge huge gain from last episode i actually didn't know it was that high i thought it was around 7.5 bill but we made a ton of money this episode and we're starting to actually ramp up the gains to more and more money each episode as you can see in our was a full year of money making on runescape 3 from basically like 200 mil to 8 billion gp we probably made more like 14 bill if you count for all the huge upgrades i bought uh during this series so if you want to pick back up where this video left off on one of the episodes that comes just after the end of this starting in 2022 well then you can click right here and you should be able to see that and yeah make sure you subscribe for all these videos and i'll see you in the next one